Hello? What's up? What's up? Hey, Carl, what's up? All right, welcome to Bombhole Group Chat presented by the conglomerate run through a wall smelling salts. We love doing this show. It's a good time. And for those of you who don't know what group chat is, the concept is to be a hub for discussion of current snowboarding topics. We're going to talk videos. We're actually going to do clip or trick of the year this year. Uh, we got bomb hole of the year. We're going to talk contests, locks open. Uh, we're basically just going to be talking tech talk, all types of industry stuff. So uh, most of the topics are submitted by you guys. So our listeners, our Patreon members, or via Instagram. So we're going to answer a bunch of questions, just a loose format conversation about snowboarding. And I want to thank our sponsors, Woodward, Mammoth, Element, Blackstrap, and Smith for coming on board for this episode. And in studio, we got some great guests today. We got Sean Fitzsimons to my right. Sean, how we doing? What's happening? Doing good. Yeah, cruising. Happy that you're in the booth with us. And to my left, I got Jay Stone over here. How we doing, Jay Stone? Doing good. Thanks for having me back. Mm -hmm. And we got Jordan Morrison studio. What's happening, Jordan? Oh, we're just hanging. Excited to be here. Love that. And of course, we can't forget uh, Silk D on the boards. Yeah, thank you. Happy to be here. I will say, though, you know, no offense to you guys, but Jay Stone, when we put out the questions... Jay Stone's like a celebrity over here. There's, everybody wants to talk product. They want all kinds of product tech talk. So we're going to get that later in the show. We're also going to be taking calls from Austin Smith. Uh, Mary Walsh is going to be calling in and Jim Sanko from Blackstrap. So it's going to be a good show. But uh, first things first, I wanted to hit the ground running with this clip of Shiloh Sanders. He was a safety from Colorado. Uh, son of Dion Sanders, Hall of Famer. You guys all know Primetime, Coach Prime. And... He hits this box, serves up a boardy with authority, and then he goes front one on, half cab off, and then I got his audio in the soundboard here so we can play it. This is incredible. Here we go. You like that? Why did you do that? <laughs> Since I've been watching Zeb Powell. Wow. Did you guys see this clip? So sick. Oh, yeah. It's insane. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. The front one, cab one. Was yeah. not expecting that at all from a football player. He's a bit of a problem. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's get him on some steel. You know what I mean? He's 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 ready for some steel. We'll get him in the air. Yeah. You think you got? You can teach him a back five or what do you? Not a back five. I'm not. Back five is pretty hard training. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's ease into this. Let's ease into this. Yeah. 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 J Mo could serve him up a good oh, front yeah. board. He's got the boxes down. He's ready to step it up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just think it's so cool. Like Zeb Powell introducing so many more people into snowboarding. Like he didn't say since I've been watching Sean White, like you didn't say since I've been watching Mark Mick, it's like Zeb Powell's bringing people into the game. It's fucking sick. Oh yeah. yeah. No, Zeb's been crushing like, and just his Instagram and everything, his whole vibe just makes snowboarding look super fun. And I think that's kind of what people who aren't in it connect really well with. Absolutely. I actually called him. I'm like, did you see this clip? He's like, dude, I was fucking blown away. He's the coolest <laughs> so shit ever. Sick. So <laughs> Yeah. Dope. So dope. Um, you know, speaking of uh, non-snowboarders snowboarding, did you guys see Zoomy's 100K? Did you guys peep any of the footage of that, of uh, skaters? you guys see anything? I saw Mark, I just, Mark Appleyard. Wow, that's a sick one. Just John Shanahan, like oh, always. Snow skate? Insane. Yep. Tray mm -hmm. flip on the snow skate. Ollie the fence. Yeah, Chris Cole was out there uh, beating stuff down on the snowboard, and Mark Appleyard both both posted like full blown snowboard edits on their on their gram. It was great, great to see. Uh, all right, we're gonna hit a couple Instagram questions here. Um, this one's from Rick Zone Three. Uh, big topic, big industry news. Blake Paul switching to Ride and Why. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Blake Paul's on GNU forever. He just switched over to Ride. Um, we got some industry insiders. You guys got any takes on this? Stoon, maybe. Dude, pretty sick. I mean, good fit. He's homies with everyone on the team. The little edit they put out was sick. It looks good on the boards. So, yeah, I'm hyped for him. I think it was a bit of a secure the bag situation. Yeah. S secure the satchel. Yeah, I think it's good that Blake's on ride. I think all his homies are on ride, so it's a good fit for sure. Yeah, huge. Ride's hyped. Ride's hyped. <laughs> he's a true professional. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's a prince, dude, for a reason. The prince of powder? Yeah, or the yeah, yeah the prince of powder. Okay. Yeah. And he's got the lettuce flowing, no beanie on. The kid's looking good. Okay, uh, I want to hit another Patreon question uh, here. A lot. Of, this came up a bunch of times. So um, I know that you wear a helmet when you do contests 
Sean, and sometimes when mm-hmm. you're chucking roast. And we had like a million questions about helmets. So uh, let me shuffle through my paperwork here. This is from our Patreon member, Ken Meeks. Thank you, Ken. Uh, what's your guys' opinion on wearing helmets? Um, Sean, I'll let you take it because you wear one. Yeah, I mean, I wear one when I'm definitely like chucking and definitely at contests you have to. Usually I don't, though, if I'm just riding. I think part of it is I haven't found a helmet that fits me that good. It's always been a struggle, like too big of a beanie, too big. Like right now I'm running an overbite on my helmet where the gogs are sinking in and the helmet's coming over all straight. <laughs> a little visor built in. Dude, it's funky, yeah. It's just been kind of hard to find. Are you a big head guy or small head guy? Are you like a seven and nine Dude. eighths or like an eight? I've been, I was running a large for a while with the gogs under. Okay. And then just switched to gogs over the large and now you got the overbite. I think I need to get a medium. It's just... I don't know. They're just not super comfortable. I do back wearing them, but it's kind of hard. It doesn't... I also just think the clips look a little... For me personally, I like my clips more. Just a Stee thing, but I fully would be cool to kind of go more towards helmets. I think in the streets, I would definitely wear a helmet though, for sure. Just because steel, concrete, you're strapped in, (laughs) hard to bail. I don't know. I think it's the opposite way. If I was hitting big ass jumps where I'd catch my edge on the landing, I would definitely wear a helmet. Streets, I can keep it pretty much under control. And I'm not getting, maybe I'd get that whiplash, but luckily, knock on wood, haven't hit my head in the streets really at all. Only time is like riding a resort. <laughs> yeah. Stu, you got a take? Yeah, I don't, you don't wear. You don't yeah. wear a dome. No, I don't wear one. Um, I think it's sick if you do wear one. I think if anyone's talking shit on you wearing a helmet, that's super whack. Like, I mean, I ride with like Jeet on a bunch. He rocks a helmet. You rock a helmet. Like, run it up for sure. But just, uh, yeah, never have worn one. Definitely is a good idea. Probably should. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, here's my take: is people should just be responsible for themselves. People just make their own choices. If somebody wants to choose to wear a helmet, wear a helmet. I wear a helmet. If somebody wants to choose to not wear a helmet, don't wear a helmet. Do whatever the fuck you want, but don't point the finger and tell everybody what to do. That's my take. For it sure. is crazy when you get on Instagram and like when you get like the flood of people that don't snowboard and it's like anything snowboard related. Dude. It's just, why is he not wearing a helmet? It's yep. the whole oh, yeah. thing. It's insane. It's like a, a front three on <laughs> like a little pal cliff and people are like, I can't believe you did that yeah. without a helmet. And I guess for us, it'd be like, well... He yeah. knows what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. I feel like to that point, it's whack to talk shit on someone wearing a helmet, and it's whack to talk sh- yeah, exactly. shit on someone not wearing a helmet. You know, yeah. that's their call. Yeah, it's, yeah. people make their own choices. I, I've smacked my head a bunch, and I wear one, and especially like riding hard pack when I'm going fast on park jumps and stuff, like I'm a bit of a loose cannon, So, uh, <laughs> and I got about five brain cells left, so I'm trying to keep those babies intact. But it's just... Just worry about yourself. Don't mm-hmm, don't worry sure. about other people. And I think it's more. It's becoming more popular. But it it's why waste any effort? You know, making people fucking. I do get superstitious though. If I start the day and I wasn't planning on like chucking, and I go no helmet, I'm not gonna put the helmet on, and then chuck. It's like I'm just gonna keep. Yeah, I'll chuck without that. the helmet at that I point that because then it's like kind of like this weird thing. Like I'm almost like expecting to fall, mm-hmm. but that's just like some weird. No, I do think there's something to shit. that because it's similar to like people who are airbag backpacks. Mm-hmm. Like when people put a helmet on, they're gonna try cr- way crazier shit mm-hmm. than if they didn't have the helmet on. Same with like an airbag backpack. They're like, oh, I'm gonna, of course I'm gonna drop on drop in on this bowl. I've got an airbag pack. I'll be fine. So you're like, I guess, assuming more risk by like putting that on. I think a lot of people do that. Like yeah. they'll go into the park and be like, I'm chucking Kark without the skill to chuck Kark, but I've got a helmet. So it's fine. And you're like, mm-hmm. what about the rest of your body? Neck down, homie. <laughs> like you can, <laughs> you can get absolutely carted. No problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like that false sense of security. Yeah. Straight up. You're like, yeah. oh, hero mode. Yeah. Helmet's yeah, yeah. on. Yeah. And, and I think, I don't know. I mean, I definitely like, because I don't wear a helmet, maybe I like wouldn't try something because I'm like, damn, I don't want to smack yeah, my head or something. Definitely. I don't know. So it yeah. keeps it keeps me like a little tamer, I think, in that sense. Yeah. If you're going out of your comfort zone, helmet on. 
I think that yeah, I that's, think that's kind of something you were saying. Like in the streets, you were running, you'd be like, no helmets, chill. And then on jumps, you'd want the yeah, helmet. I kind of feel the other way yeah. around. Because you're comfortable on jumps. I'm more I'm, comfy on yeah, jumps. Exactly. Yeah. Where I'm hitting steel, I'm kind of like, damn, I kind of wish I had a helmet on right now. <laughs> but usually you're like cruising, mm-hmm. like park laps. I'd be like, damn, it'd be kind of nice to have a helmet on. Just I think of steel on my head. I'm like, damn, that's gnarly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's keep it moving here. Uh, we should talk about one insane clip here that uh, Jonah Canelton, I hope I said his last name right, took the internet by storm. It's like a back nine rewind, I think. Sean, you're a jump expert. Let's pull this clip up. What do we got here? So he comes off, goofy foot. Dude, I don't even know. That shit is so crazy. It's a back seven, technically. Back nine rewind with a tail grab, unless it's switch. It's like, yeah, back double nine, and then he pulls it back to seven. Yeah, it was like into that crippler. Like, it was like back. Can I see it one more time? That is so hard to even understand. He's tracking like a back 10. Yeah. But then he stops at back nine and brings it back. He goes like, that, that he goes like I would think about like, for me to be like, switch back five crippler and then like flips his hips around do you think that was intentional i think it was it could have been he's pretty excited i have a feeling that maybe and i could definitely be wrong i think that the first time he did it it like went somewhere near that and then he's like whoa that was crazy and then probably then tried to do it yeah, yeah, if that was intentional, mm-hmm. I mean, it's incredible no Dude, matter with what. With the rewind, it seems the, intentional. Yeah, yeah the yeah, rewinds, yeah. The, I love seeing jump tricks like this. Like, this is... Which, yeah, it's like... Yeah. That's crazy. All right, Dude, shout out. Was it say, He called it the elk flip? Is that what he's calling it? Yeah, elk, elk flip. flip. Yeah, that thing's insane. Shout out to Jonah Cancel. And that's a, that's yeah. a jump clip that gets me excited yeah, right there. that's the kind of shit you want to see. That's that yep. new shit. Yeah. We love that. Okay, we're going to get into Nitro Turbo Takes. Uh, basically, Canute Eliason sends us a bunch of questions... And Silk reads them. Welcome to Nitro Turbo Takes. Brought to you by Nitro Snowboards and Canoe Eliason. Nitro Snowboards has been building snowboard products, boards, boots, and bindings for over 34 years. And has one simple mission. To inspire people to get out and go snowboarding and support their local and global community by supporting the shops, the organizations, and the people who are dedicating their lives to this. Snowboarding is what got us here, and giving back to snowboarding is what keeps us here. The deeper the layers, the better the cake. Just like the snowboarding community, this season, Nitro is releasing a two-part film project, Layers, The Unintentional Culture of Snowboarding, a full-length 80-minute documentary exploring the different layers of the snowboard community around the world. First one's for Sean. What was your first local snowboard shop? Uh, it would have been IPS, in your way's pool service, Hood River. All right, Jay Stone, in your opinion, are softer, torsionally flexible boards better slash more fun to ride than stiff? 100%. That's my jam. I love to be able to pedal the board with my feet. It makes it a lot more lively and can do a lot more with it and don't have to work so hard. All right, Jordan, is it true that you cab 270 front board pretzeled the Highland Rail? If not, do you think you could? <laughs> um, that is false. That's a really good rumor Knut made about 15 years ago. I guess at one point, John Cooley showed up at Milo, and he's like, have you guys heard of that Jordan? I guess he cab to pretzel the Eastmont. And so ever since that, my name's kind of been on the map. Thanks, Knut. Oh, my. Which one's Eastmont? Uh, so they changed the rail. Now it's a double rail that Jed backlip same weight in the ride video. Okay. Sick. All right, Chris, is a tail block or hand plant better? Oof, better? I mean, it all just depends on who does it. Nothing's better. Uh, I I think I love hand plants. I love tail blocks, but I love when somebody spears that tail in and they're stalling for like four seconds and you're just like, ooh, you know, that's me. But they're all, it's all great. Do what you want. All right, this is an all play scenario right here. What was the last thing you bought from a snowboard shop? I bought socks at Milo two days ago. Um, uh, I bought some <laughs> volley straps from Milo a few months ago. 
Uh, I buy skateboards from snowboard shops usually. So I bought some girl uh, eight skateboards. Uh, I bought a duffel from Doug's in Hood River. Mm. All right, Sean, are you making an Olympic run? If so, what is your dream run? Yeah, I'm definitely trying to make it to Italy. My dream run, I don't know. That's kind of it's a loaded question because you don't see the <laughs> course, but I guess it would probably be, if I could think about like, the hardest shit I could do, at least jump-wise, would be like back 16, switch back 16, front 18, if it's three jumps. Front that 18, be, nose grab. Front 18, nose grab. Yeah. No, no, probably just a mute, but uh, yeah, that would probably be. All right. Jordan, what advice would you give to a kid trying to pursue pursue their snowboarding dream by getting in the industry? Um, that you just got to hang around and be cool and not be too aggressive and make sure that you are putting in the work that you need to do and then just have fun with it and make sure you're around the right people and then you'll be set. All right, Jay Stone, what's your favorite snowboard model this year that is not K2? Ooh, I'm going to have to go with the Gentem Stick Giant Man Ray. Mm. Sick board. All right, Chris, what do pro snowboarders contribute to the snowboard community, in your opinion? Uh, they're the tip of the spear. I mean, it's just like snowboarding is this big thing, and at the very point of it is the the, the best that inspire others by their skill set and their lifestyle and the culture that they they make the sport cool. They push the progression. They set the trends. They're the the tip of the spear. They're they're really important to you. We need heroes. We need fucking heroes. We need people to look up to. And that's that's pro snowboard. All right. Jordan, this one's for you. What is your favorite snowboard part of all time? Um Probably Justin Benny burning bridges. Woo! 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 It's a good choice. All right, another all play. What was the last snowboard movie you watched on your TV start to finish? Does, uh, does Out Cold count? <laughs> <laughs> because I, I watched that a couple days ago. Nah, we'll count it. I'll count it. I get to make the rules. Um, Were Losers 2 or Atlas? I've been watching those ones quite a bit. Can't remember one of those two. Um, I don't know. This might like kind of just a part, but Ryo's part that he just dropped or Yo's part. Oh yeah, it was really good. Yeah, it was sick. It was really that counts. Sick. That counts. Yeah, I just watched that Buster video Woo. with Dylan. Ooh. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Dusty, sick one. Sleeper, Lolo, yeah, in Denver. Denver. A lot of spring, yeah. a lot of spring that. action in there. Yeah, that was probably yeah. like. I don't know what they did, but my guess is like two weeks in Finland and then that spring trip. They basically and they fucking made a whole video. whole movie in July, basically. <laughs> yeah. All right, Sean. Times. What's your what is the future of competitive sloped style contests? Dude, I don't know. I mean, I think it's gonna kind of keep doing what it's doing right now until we get some of those kind of tricks in there. Um, I mean, I've always, I've been pushing for this head-to-head -head format. Maybe just change up the format, you know, and have like an overall that people can get excited about where you're kind of watching the whole tour instead of just a random comp, comp in Switzerland and there's a random comp in Czech Republic and then there's one in the States. It's like there's no tour, I feel like. And having, having spots that are um, like jib-specific and then transition-specific or like jump-specific, things like that. You know, just getting more of a tour involved, I think. I'd watch the tour. All right. I like that take, yeah, like that WSL style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. something to follow. It's a good more. take. I feel like the the judging would be a lot more consistent too. Mm -hmm. You know, like because I've never judged a contest, but watching ten riders go and then just calibrating like you're judging from rider one to ten, you're like mm -hmm. versus head to head would be it's way hard. easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think head to head builds the drama. Mm -hmm. Really good. It, give me it, something to follow. It, it give me something to follow. The thing is, is it, it doesn't, it's not always like th the order of best riders to worst riders. It's just kind of the hand you're dealt because sometimes the two best riders are in a heat and they, one of them drops out and then, you know, so it's kind of a little bit more, uh, evens the playing field a little bit and makes a little more drama. Yeah. Um, and so. you see that all the time, like given a heat, like one heat, they might look equally stacked, but then one heat, a bunch of people fall. And yep. so, like, at least in the big airs, you see it a lot where you're like, oh, I'm in the stacked heat. And then 
everyone falls. You ha- end up landing and you make it through on something that's like pretty minor. And then the next heat is just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And 18s aren't getting in. Like that happened in Copper, you know. Sick. It was ridiculous. But um, to that heat thing, like it just, I think it'd make it a little more clear for the viewer too. Because mm-hmm. then the viewer's kind of judging. You know, with the, you watch 60 riders, you're like, I don't know. It's hard to judge. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I like the heats. Whenever I watch SLS, I'm like, yeah. I can I can keep track. I, it's very easy to understand. And I'm like, ah, oh, that shouldn't have been a fucking eight and a half. Come and on. it doesn't have to be like head, it can be like four people. Yeah. You know, four people head to head. Now in like a jam format what, sleds. What about judging where you have I like that. The sled sled laps where it's quick, rapid yeah, yeah. fire. That'd, that'd be amazing. Because then you could do it, you could do I mean, figure a slope style run takes like thirty seconds to get through. Um so let's just give them a minute a run, right? For with the judging and everything involved. You could like rip like you could ten minutes and you could easily get four laps each, you know. And then you know what I think would be cool that would really differentiate people is how deep their bag is too. Mm-hmm. You know, like instead of like like half pipe for example, it's what is it five hits? Yeah. But if you had a ten hit half pipe, it would really change the entire contest. <laughs> yeah, you'd be blown out though. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> you'd be yeah, so would, blown dude, out. Your body would buckle by <laughs> it. <laughs> Be so you'd be big. seen, bro, you'd see people jean out on the tent. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. All right, we'll keep it going here. Jay Stone, why should people buy a POW surfer? Dude. Wow. Uh, that's, uh, I mean, gives you that first kickflip feeling kind of, you know, normally if you snowboard down a little powder run strapped in, it's not that exciting. Put a POW surfer on your feet and it's one of the funnest things you can do. All right, Jordan. Is 50 ing to front 180 off a trick, is the, is 50 50 front one a trick that should be in a video part? I mean, it could be. It depends. If you find a spot and it looks sick, pl- run it up. But I don't think I've done one of those in a minute. I feel like it'd be cool. You just go yeah. ignorant. Yeah. Big ass. You game. find a way to close up. Like, like, huge, like yeah, Dusty, close exactly. Just, oh, Dusty could do a sick yeah. one. You know who had one recently? Gabe Ferg. Yep. Yeah. Oh, true. Oh, oh, yeah. Pole jam front one. Yeah, oh, that yeah. was sick. Yeah. See, that's the bullshit. Oh, yeah. there, there's this unwritten rule book of snowboarding where it's like, this trick's cool. This trick's not cool. We got to stay away from these. Mm-hmm. And it's like, actually, it's fucking bullshit. Just do, just like, you can make anything yeah. look good or you can make anything look heinous. I think, yeah. There's a exactly. few lines, though. There's a spot for anything. Go on. Like with the grabbing. Oh, I think grabbing. we can all draw yeah, lines. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. In the sand somewhere. Yeah, but what, what definitely with like Tindy. Yep. And new has become a thing. Yeah, like, that's a tough uh, yeah, that's, and then that's people sinister. are doing that with Japan and it's kind of like, you're not. What about boot? <laughs> boot? I'd take boot over newt. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'll take boot over newt. You know, one thing it's an interesting topic on that. I got a, I got a little bit of a pet peeve is like, there's two different types of tail grabs, right? You see it in a lot of competitive spins when people start doing big spins where there's like the tail grab where you're kind of in a boxy stance where you're just grabbing tail. And, and then there's the tail grab or nose grab for that matter, where you like, bring it up to your ear mm. and you like bend your back leg and those ones just you're kind of doing like a little arch yeah like those, are, those aren't it the arch isn't it no yeah I don't think it's ever good when you're like ar- every time your back is doing that unless you're doing a method maybe stay away from that <laughs> you know <laughs> Rule I mean enough. in general yeah you shouldn't be like a tail grab when you're like this it's like what is happening you want to be squared up skateboards out there on yeah. the tail grab mm-hmm. keep it tight what else? I know you got another hot take on it. Okay, grab. yeah. I mean, this one's been bugging me, um, so I guess I'll just let it out of the cage. But people are kind of get with. Okay, it happens a lot on frontside spins. You go off the jump and you're doing a big spin. Let's just say you're doing a 14 or an 18. I can relate to this. Go on. And but the mute to tail, like going mute, because you can go off the lip, get mute real easy, and then grab tail, let go of mute and sort of just wrap through it. Um, A really good, I mean, I have pretty firsthand experience with this. When I first tried front 18, I was trying it with tail really hard because you have to, there's so much patience involved with it. You have to go off the lip, chill, then grab tail, and then go. So it's just like super easy to miss your snap. Like I flat backed mine when I tried it. And then Luke does a really good one, front 18 tail, but it's just respect when you go because you have to be patient and then grab tail with the mute. You can kind of cheat it and go get your grab, start start the like the cork, and then grab tail. And tail kind of lets you 
open up and like wrap out of it. So then you can just start spinning like, what? and the mute is kind of, I just think it's a cop out, I guess. I think either go mute or tail, unless you're doing something like Mick Mo. We saw he did like front triple 14 mute. And then on the last slip goes tail for the ste factor of it. Pokes tail is not using it to like unwind. You know, he's going, yeah, like poking the nose with the tail grab to be like, I'm trying to make this look good mm -hmm. versus mute tail, let go of mute and just rap. Mm -hmm. I like that take. Yeah. There's that there's, I've seen some of those big spins with the nose and tail where they're up by the ear and they don't look right with the, but, uh, that, that's a hot take. I like that. Mick Moe's do look phenomenal as well. That's it's kind of the equivalent to the swivel back one onto a rail, you know? Ooh, kind yeah, of like I would say that's situation. the same yeah. sort good. of situation there. I like it. I mean, it's good to get inside the mind of somebody doing an 18 because this is uh, unfamiliar territory for <laughs> every one of the listeners. Uh, and, uh, and everyone in the booth. And everybody besides <laughs> one person. <laughs> yeah. Team 9 to 5 is uh, yeah. <laughs> not resonating with the 18. Mm -hmm. Silk could probably relate, though. Yeah, I get it. I don't need to get into it. with sorry. <laughs> You, you understand. Is that it? For, is that it for hot takes? We got a, we got two more. Okay. We got one for me. How long does it take to edit a bomb hole single guest episode? That's a good question, Knut. And it definitely depends on how long we record. If we record for like three hours, it'll probably take me like four hours to edit. But if we record for like five hours, then we're talking about like maybe nine hours of editing. So if you're in here and you're a guest, let's keep it tight. Keep it tight. Let's keep it tight. tight. All right, last question. I'll play. What's the best way people can support snowboarding? Shops is an easy one. Yeah. Just find what you want and then go in and talk. I mean, they know so much. It's a good place to get started, especially if you're getting into it. And if you are into it, you want to be homies with everyone at the shop. So yeah. you just go in and hang out, and that makes a big difference. And that's yeah. You'll, you'll, yeah, you'll find your homies there too. Sure. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I think supporting brands that support snowboarders, you know, like brands who actually have snowboard teams, because there's a lot of brands out there that mm. don't and want to put money back into magazines and riders and any sort of media outlet. I think that goes a long way. Yeah, absolutely. I think simple stuff, just getting involved with the snowboard community and like be, not being just a person that rides a snowboard, but understanding the culture of it, whether it's simple stuff like watching a video, subscribing to a magazine. Uh, going to your local shop, um, even listening to this show is is a way of supporting snowboarding or supporting the brands that support the magazines and the podcasts. You know, I think all of it on any level is good. Yeah, for sure. Anything else, Bon? Um, I don't know. Just getting out there, snowboarding a bunch, being hyped on it, sharing snowboarding. On get out social, there, and you get know, some. and like just being hyped at the mountain, telling your friends. Yeah. Bring bring friends into it. Mm -hmm. Would you say like and subscribe would be a good way to do that? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> like, subscribe, share, <laughs> comment, comment. So you're gonna want to listen to this podcast every single <laughs> yeah. day. That's, uh, that's the best way you can support snowboarding. <laughs> All right, we got some exciting stuff we're gonna get into here. I get excited about snowboarding. I get excited about fucking people catching air and grenading, specifically bomb holes. You know, we, this is the bomb hole. So uh, this year, we decided to do bomb hole of the year Let's go. because there was really only one clear winner that we didn't even need to make categories for this. So uh, congratulations to Haruhi Tuhi for winning bomb hole of the year. Here we go. Oh, my God. Wow. Uh, maybe, Bon, you could describe what's happening for the people listening that can't see the clip on the screen. Yeah, this guy just launched off like a... 80 foot cliff to flat basically do with think, minimal powder. Do you think it's landable? Like, what do you think he was thinking uh, when he went off that? No, not yeah, landable. Not landable. <laughs> not landable. <laughs> Dude, you're going to need like the Batman exoskeleton knees to make that. Shout out to Sect Fitness Squat Rack. Mikey LeBlanc might have landed that though. Yeah, yeah he might do it. Mm -hmm. He took the skier out straight to the back. <laughs> <laughs> no That's actually a land in skiing. <laughs> yeah. That's actually a make. For sure. No regard for safety. His steve yeah, it was kind of sick. He went for like the mel off of it. His steve is fire on that. Yeah. Okay. All oh, right. No. Congrats for winning bomb hole of the year. Uh, we have no trophy, no awards, no nothing. 
All right, boys. I think it's time to to hit assault. What do you guys think? If you guys all you guys have all smacked one, right? Oh yeah. Wait, I'm missing assault. Uh, oh, uh, Silk just hit one. Oh, Here, give yours. Good to, batch. Here, dude. Oh, you got Jamo. You hit one, Bond? No, I haven't hit it yet. Oh. Last time I hit one, well, it's was always right just the, the lead up. Last time I hit one was right here. before smacking a drive at the Brighton oh. Golf Tournament. Oh. <coughs> Holy! Ooh. 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 Good it's like batch. The, it's like the worst thing ever, but addicting at the same time. Oh, that's yeah. good. That's a good batch. Yeah, you ever want to try one? Uh, oh. Bombhole.com. Bombhole.com. I think they ran down my spine. Oh. Wow. People can't see there this, but there's a smelling salt graveyard behind the booth. Oh my right god. Now. We got a lot down there. All right, we're gonna get into a good segment here. Trick of the year. Um, you know, we did our best. I put together a council for trick of the year of snowboard nerds. Um, so we had uh, Lucy was on there, Chaz Treslow, uh, Holden Barth, big time nerd. Um, who else was on there? Ted Borland, Bertner. We kind of had a group text going, a bunch of people talking about tricks. So um, we basically narrowed it down. We got a bunch of honorable mentions. You know, maybe we'll run through a few of those. You know, uh, Jonathan, <clears throat> Jonathan Begley with the back one from Melter 3 was insane. Jed's backlip around the pool, Danimals. Wall Ride 270 in Rated R. Luke Winkleman, the switchback two on the kink. That was like on the cusp of making it. And then Kazu's Enderline, uh, Ethan Dice, Fridge's Transfer. You know, there's, the list goes on. There's a lot of like almost, but we boiled it down to 10 for men here and 10 for women. And we're going to have you guys vote on Instagram. So uh, we're going to run through this list real quick. We've talked about some of these clips. But Char- Charlie Folker from Impaler Video, Gap Hardway Front 2. Ooh. Travis Rice, he does his Ender three-piece line from Sequencer. That's a bit of a bad Larry. We got Forrest Bailey, board slider on the C ledge. That's kind of my favorite. I'm just yeah. going to be biased on that. Uh, Brent Bam does a back 350 onto a kink rail and like lands in the pocket like an absolute animal. Uh, Riley Nickerson, switchback lip through the C, diving into the inside there. Uh, Tor Gear did backside 1260 on Ravine Gap, yeah. Temple of the Dog. Crazy. Like heavy. Uh, then Yuki Kodono went front 12 on Ravine Gap in Blink. And then honorable mention, um, we didn't put him in here, Judd Henke's went front 14 as well. Um, you know, there was some debate around that one. I personally loved it. Didn't make it in the top. 10 list, but very high honorable mention. Uh, Jed Anderson's Ender from Rated R, the double line. Um, I think that's what, Halifax or something? I don't know where that was, but sick clip. And then we have uh, Haldor Helgeson holding it down in the Lobsters video at that McTwist shifty. And then the last one to round out the top 10, we had Darcy Sharp's uh, front 10 shifty from Prey. So those are our top 10 clips of the year. We're going to put them on Instagram and then you guys can vote. And then for women, we're going to run through uh, our top 10 list uh, list here as well. So we have uh, Lolo, front board from Buster. Did you guys see that in that big kink rail? That was nice. Yeah. Crazy one. That was butter. Yeah, squared up through the whole thing. That was Squarey Milton. Shout out. <laughs> and then we had uh, Zoe. She went front 10 into powder on a cheese wedge. Could be wrong. First one to do it. Potential NBD. I yeah. think it's an NBD. Maybe more research, but I think you're right. Yeah, probably going to get ripped to shreds in the comment for that, but I think it's an NBD. Uh, Kokomo, she did She did a couple incredible tricks this year, but that back 14. Mm-hmm. And copper. Copper. Big air. Butter. Perfect. She do cab 12 back 14? Yeah, she did cab 12, wobbled and sick, and then back 14, and then did cab 14. Not as, like, not bolts, but did it. Another cap 14. It was insane. The back 14, she was chilling, though. <coughs> like, lands hands in her pockets. Cruising. Uh, one of my favorites, Gracie Warner, does uh, board that big board slide on that kink rail. Uh, and then we got Jamie Anderson's back five from her latest project on that step down. Mm-hmm. Beast. Landing switch into powder. Gangster move. And then we have uh, Jill Perkins' front two on the gap rail um, that she did twice in Rated R. And then, of course, another one we have of Jill is the 50-50 ender-ender. Yeah, mm-hmm. that rail was insane. Yeah, Banger. And we have Iris Pham with that huge 50 from Wild Game. And just on a personal level, Zoe's switchback 12 that she did in Edmonton Big Air. Yeah, insane. Looks so good. Dude, I think when I think about best trick, when is your jaw on the floor? 
And it's like that. Right there. That's it. Yeah. Like the trick of the year. I mean, it's just like my jaw was on the floor. And a lot of chicks, you don't see a lot of switchback 12s from women in general. And then for her to do it with that grab, that steezy, and that bolt is pretty yeah. unreal. And then we had to put in uh, Mia Brooks cab 1440. Mm -hmm. uh, she's the first ever female to do a cab 14 as well. So um, definitely kind of a, that one's a little bit more of like a balanced like park jump rail powder. Um, all the all the dudes clips are kind of like video park clips. But mm -hmm. so that's it. That's our top ten. And if you go through on our Instagram, we're gonna have a carousel, and then you guys vote. We'll tally it up, and you guys pick uh, what you guys think is trick of the year on what we boiled it down to. I know there are so many great tricks this year that we missed and that you could debate, but um, that's what we put together. Yeah, comment the ones we missed. Too. I had one. I had one thing since we're on it. What do you guys think is gnarlier? Tour Gear's back 12 over Ravine? Or, um, uh, oh my God, I'm fully blanking. Yuki? Yuki's front 12. I mean, I could never do a back 12. I could see myself doing a front 12. like Because I got into it last night with are, some buddies over what was... I mean, I think for me... What would you rather try? I'm more of a front side spinner in general, so that's me. Um... And I think I like the back five rotation, like a front five, you come around open, you know, because I'm looking at it more of a, we'll, we'll boil it down from the motion of a 540 instead of a 1260 because you're taking off regular and spinning front side landing switch. You, you see your landing where backside that, that like a back five, back one, back nine, you kind of come around blind into powder. I think that way is harder to land. Yeah, but I think like landing with those toes is nicer, you mm -hmm. know? Like it's so hard to finish that front side when you're going to switch because you have to come all the way over and really commit to finishing it. Where backside coming in switch like that, you can kind of, I don't know if cheat it is right, but you can kind of under rotate that a little bit mm -hmm. easier. You're saying like toes. catch your nose when you come around. Yeah, like yeah, exactly. Toes, yeah, or like, Whereas no. like the front side, it's easy to get back mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah. not come over on it. Yeah, I'm with Chris Both, on. on Backside seems so much harder to me, just purely for the sake of spotting your landing. Yeah, but and in powder, you can when you come around like that, you can kind of wheelie better. Like yeah. a yeah, front yeah, five yeah. into powder, you can kind of wheelie it. Whereas yeah. a front five on a park jump is, is it is. I get what you're saying. Like you can't dig your toes in. And yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. For for a park jump, it's like front five. You put your back shoulder down the mm -hmm. hill when you're coming around, so you land to your toes. But in pow, you can like you can kind of like you can squeak it and yeah. get it get to your tail and wheelie out. And we should probably talk about why uh, Judd Henke's, you know, there's some debate. I think it's kind of funny for our listeners to know uh, basically Judd Henke's front 14 ravine gap. And he put it out on Instagram right yeah. after. And it was in um, Finder's Project with, with mm -hmm. um, Brandon Davis. So they put it out real time. Yeah, because I guess the rumor I heard was originally it wasn't going to be in the project because he knee grabbed on it. But it was also the first time he's ever done it. It was insane. But it ended up being in the project. So, but he, thinking that it might not be in the project, put it on Instagram. And to just clarify the knee grab, he grabbed Indy. Yeah. The thing yeah. is, is that he took his other hand and he hooked it around his leg, which, like in contest world, when you kind of like grab underneath your knees, it's it's not that sick. But it's a backcountry jump. And when I saw the fourteen, I was shitting myself because I didn't notice that he had like hooked his arm under. So it's funny that like they they kind of like discredited this incredible trick because of it. But I still like if nobody had told Either me about the, the like it's filmed far away, I'm like holy mm. shit, that was insane. So it was kind of a funny debate about this incredible trick. Um, you guys got takes on that? What's insane. up? Uh, so with the knee grab, like. In the park, like, do a lot of dudes do that? Just as far as like, a, it's like a safety, like, usually I can means tuck it's up not and, going good. So like, if you're like to, trying to like speed up, you're your like, speed I gotta up. get. Yeah, and there. you and you were saying that was the first one he's ever done on that big of a jump. That's, I mean, yeah, ever. I don't not, blame the dude for, you know, getting a little safety in there. Like, that's such an insane trick. I would never discredit it for that. I mean, if he only grabbed the back of his knee, not the board, yeah, that doesn't count. But yeah, he held that grab all day. Yeah, for sure. I got to slap some respect on people keeping it tight, though, where they're like, their standard is that high, you know, like where we're not even going to use this clip. We're going to put it on Instagram because because of this little subtlety, like fucking respect. You know what I mean? I think that as, as much as I would be like, we're using that at all costs, no matter what. <laughs> yeah. That's the best thing I've ever done. Every, every on angle. My snowboard, put it on. Every angle. Yeah. But like... 
kind of respect, like, nah, that's a, that's a no-fly zone. I kind of, I, personally, I would n- not put that on Instagram. I would have saved it, but respect. Yeah, no, for sure. That's that Kuzik mentality. It's got to be pristine. Yeah. All right, let's take a break and talk about one of our favorite places, Woodward Park City. We recently had an event up there called the Dust Bomb Ride Day Rail Jam. It was a blast. Uh, they facilitated us really well. They took great care of us. And it's just a good place to go snowboard with your friends. Easy commitment. It's only 15 minutes from Salt Lake. You got everything from beginner features all the way up to pro big jumps. The triple line is absolutely hitting right now. So be sure to check out Woodward Park City. And they got lift lift tickets starting at only $40. And then for $119 a month, you can get unlimited outdoor riding. So that's less than a straight-up lift ticket in most resorts these days. And you get a month of riding. They got night riding if you want to go after work, which is great for us nine to fivers. And one thing I learned recently, Brandon Cocard was on the show and he talked about how he went to the foam pit on the roller board indoors and learned switchback rodeos. And then that day strapped on his snowboard and learned it on the jump. So it's really cool. If you want to learn, you know, backflips or three sixties, you can do it into a foam pit and then take it to the snow. They got great beginner slopes if you just are learning, and they got a great three-pack of big jumps if you're trying to get after it. And they got tubing. Great place to go on a date. If you want to have a good time with your friends, go tubing. It's friggin' awesome. It's just a good place to have fun with your friends. Simple as that. Check out Woodward Park City. All right, so we still got some other good stuff to look forward in the show. In a minute, we're going to call Austin Smith, and then we're going to call Mary uh, Walsh a little bit later. And then we're going to call Jim Sanko from Blackstrap. And uh, we got a bunch of Instagram questions to answer. And uh, Jay Stone's going to do some tech talk. We're going to talk locks open. But right now we're going to get on a call from Austin Smith that's brought to you by Smith. They make great helmets. They make great goggles. They've been around since 1965. We're actually going to be doing a giveaway on this uh, after this call. We'll give you the details after it, but we're going to get Austin Smith on the line. Let's give him a ring. Let's see if he picks up, first of all, because uh, who knows? He's a busy man. He, uh, let's see if he's got us here. Oh, he's, it's ringing. Yellow. Hi, I'm looking for 2007 Rookie of the Year, Austin Smith. Yeah, speaking. Nice. How are we doing, brother? Oh, we're doing good. We're doing good. We said uh, Curtis actually just left my house. And uh, I'm messing around with some little videos with Jake. Nice. Kurt Dog just left. Good stuff. Also, uh, he's, a, he's, a Smith, uh, he's a Smith rider as well, right? That he is. That he is. He's Team Smith. We've been going on some trips together. It's been great. Now, you know, the reason why we're really calling is because I've heard you've been trolling Curtis. And to provide, provide a little bit of context, uh, Kurt came on our show. He talked about how he had a snowmobile. It caught on fire. His sister put it out, which was a bit of a problem because if it had burned to the ground, he would have got insurance money. And now he has this snowmobile that he can't sell. And from what I understand, you created a burner Facebook account um, and started trolling him about buying the snowmobile. I'd love to hear more about that, Austin. Um, Yeah, this is all accurate. It's something we used to do way more. It's been a little lapsed, but the old classic was always... uh putting ads for like free firewood in the, in the fall and winter. And then you put their phone number down, they get calls all day long about free firewood. We did like free sheeps a couple times, but the latest was, yeah, he's been trying to sell this snowmobile for, I don't know, months, almost years. And I don't know, I was just kind of bored the other day. And so I have a, uh, a burner Facebook and started asking some questions about it. Um, asking if I could get, if he had any GoPro edits available so I could see it running. And then what really tipped it over, tipped it over the edge is that I uh, talked to Pashley about it and he lit up like a freaking Christmas tree with excitement and instantly also created a burner account and then also started trolling Curtis. And then the best part is that Curtis, like, meanwhile, sends the screenshots of our conversations back to us, not knowing that we're the ones on the other end of that. <laughs> and it's just me and Pashley going back and forth of just like, oh, my God, let's see what we can get him to do now. Um, so I'm trying to get him to come pick me up from my house, take me up to the mountain to give me a demo ride out to Elk Lake. Um, Pashley's been working on you know, all sorts of different videos that he's sending them of Revenant and talking about how it's uh, it's 
making sure it's not a lemon because it's yellow, but he likes the color yellow because it's Wu Tang on the storm killer bees vibe or something. And then Curtis just getting real excited. Exactly. That's what I was thinking. Hell yeah. You're going to love this thing. <laughs> A little sidebar, I actually talked to Curtis yesterday and he was very excited about a potential buyer of his snowmobile too, so I can kind of corroborate that. Now, what are your, uh, really curious what the burner names are. What did you come up with for uh, Facebook names? Um, Pashley is Andrew Franklin. And as Curtis calls me, he's like, oh, I got this one guy that really wants to buy it, but he's just working out some financing deals right now. I'm like, nice, mm-hmm. uh, nice. That one's Pashley. He's like, I got this other guy that wants to, he wants to test ride it on Friday. And I'm like, yep, that's me. Um, my name is, I don't know what my last name is on there. First name Zoe. I was saying that I was buying it as a, uh, as a gift to myself. Um, I've never snowmobiled, but my boyfriend's super into snowmobiling and that I want to, uh, surprise him with a snowmobile so we can go together as a birthday <laughs> present for him. Straight turbo. <laughs> 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 Incredible. So what's uh, what, what kind of pictures did you, for this burner profile, what kind of pictures did you select just out of curiosity? Like, what do we got? I, well, I think there's like a photo, actually, I think like the headline photo is a trip, a photo from a trip me and Curtis were on. So I thought that was going to be a red flag, but apparently, apparently it uh, slid through some nice little sunset or something. I don't know. Didn't Pashley like do a bunch of snowmobile photos? Like he found like a bunch of like Jerry sled photos for his. That sounds about right. Right now he's trying to get videos of Curtis lifting and dropping the track to show the suspension work. So he's like, if you could send me some slow-mo videos of you like lifting the track, dropping it so I can see the suspension in action to make sure it's good. And so Curtis is out there like trying to set up his phone on a tripod, starting it, revving the engine, dropping it to test the Zebra suspension. It's pretty good. Oh, that's incredible. So this is, uh, we're recording this on a Friday. This will come out this coming Wednesday. Um, hopefully, you know, hopefully he finds out about it. Um, you know, hopefully he doesn't find out about it actually. And you guys continue trolling him, you know? Yeah. We're going to keep it going. Um, we were maybe going to do a test ride tomorrow. So I don't know how we'd, uh, play that one out. If I just show up to the parking lot to meet him for the test ride, <laughs> um, which would be pretty, pretty rich. Go, uh, go face mask on and just, uh, meet him in the lot, borrow somebody's car. Oh my God. With a GoPro <laughs> face mask. And then you throw a GoPro on dude. If you, if you, you gotta do, do this, this, like you take somebody else's car, that would be insane. That would be the ultimate troll. You give a kid like 20 bucks to go do it. Yeah. Fill him in on the info. And then just like, and then just roost it then just like light up and take off on the thing fully pinned later. <laughs> Oh, that's incredible. I love that. Uh, good we'll see stuff. How that develops. Now, um, you know, I was wondering, you spent a lot of time tomahawking. Uh, how are those Smiths when you, when you tomahawk pretty good in the fog department or how are we feeling about that? I mean, they haven't, I've been wearing it for 15 years and I've never had a foggy pair of goggles. So <laughs> fog, fog patrol is 10 out of 10. Wow. And you're in the Northwest there too, which is definitely uh, a little soggy bottom boys. And you guys just came out with a video where you went to Antarctica, right? Yeah, Endurance 2. I think Curtis is talking about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I did a little analog trip, Endurance 2, to Antarctica with Jake Price. And uh, it's pretty weird. I actually just saw it for the first time out in Utah and had Interlude, the trade show. And the movie was uh, much weirder than I thought. But um, people were loving it. Jake's, Jake's an artist. He said, I heard he set up a remote, like a uh, piano that just played the soundtrack with nobody playing the piano, like an automated piano situation. Yeah. We were trying to get Scott Sullivan to play the piano. We we're trying to get him to come to the Dirks and Derby to like do a live, um, I don't know what a piano, piano session. Um, but he couldn't make it. And then we found a self playing piano. So yeah, we, uh, we pivoted and it worked out. That's amazing. Now, what's going on? Uh, you yeah. got your board brand season. Um, mm-hmm. what are you, what's going on with season? Just sell me on sell me on season. season. Sell us on it. Sell. All right, two minute elevator pitch. Elevator pitch. Um, I started myself and Eric Pollard, pro skier out of Mount Hood. Started season maybe three or four years ago, and we're just trying to freaking make sure people have a good time out there. And how we're doing that is like trying to. I guess, comes from living in the parking lot, um, shutting up at bachelor and seeing people with like 
kind of busted gear. A lot of people are on a little bit busted gear. And the biggest thing that I saw people struggling with is unwaxed boards. And so I wanted to create a brand and uh, include service with it. And so if you buy a board or buy skis, you can get it waxed and serviced for the life of the equipment to try to uh, make sure you have the best time possible out there. How does that work? At At Evo locations only? Yeah, we partnered up with Evo, and so yeah, you can take it into any of their shops and get it waxed every single day if you want, every other day if you want. But I'm a big, uh, coming from Bachelor, it's a little bit flatter here. I'm a big advocate for waxing your board more. I feel like uh, I see a lot of people out there with dry bases. And and yeah, if you want to have a good time in the mountain, you got to have uh, tuned up equipment. And what's the story behind the graphics? Because I know you guys don't the- change your graphics year after year. We haven't really changed the graphics. Yeah, it's just, um, I don't know. I think as a pro snowboarder every year, your job is to sell like a a new colorway or a new or new graphic, whether it's a blue jacket, then a ye- yellow jacket, then it's a red jacket. And at the end of the day, a lot of the jackets are pretty similar. And so similar with boards, like it was just kind of a lot of graphic turnover. And even though folks had only ridden a board, maybe – five, 10, 15 days, they feel like pressured to get a new board because they don't want to be on the, the last year's model. But yeah, our ethos is kind of like use the board to the end of its life cycle, not to the end of its graphic cycle. So whether or not you bought a board this year or five years ago, there isn't any like weird shaming, I guess, going on of like, oh, you're on the old one, huh? You got to get this new one that's purple. That's fucking awesome. I love that. How's so, the yeah. how's business? How's it going? The business good. Yeah, we get we kind of get to make stuff, and then we kind of pass the ball over to Evo, and they get to sell stuff. And Evo is real good at selling stuff, so that's not my my uh, bread and butter. And luckily, those dudes over there are pretty good at that side of things. Mm, I like that. You guys got? Uh, I heard Tonino might be helping out over there. Is that true? <sighs> that's that's some hot goss. Um, we might have to cut this one out, but. We had some insider um, insider trading info right there. Best case scenario, I'm hoping for it. I mean, I I kind of owe my whole career to Tanina, I'd say, um, for a, a number of different reasons. But one is just like everything that I've learned about snowboards, about snowboard designs. A lot of it all came from Tanino. And so to be going full circle and now working with him again in a different brand, Um I'm pretty excited. So I don't want to jinx it, but fingers crossed. That's incredible. I love that. Now you were talking about how you just ordered something with some of the new 3D goggles. What's going on with this 3D goggle situation or 3D printing rather? 3D printed goggles. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about these. Um, So yeah, Smith like came out with this new goggle or kind of new technology around it. You download this app, you scan your whole face um, and it kind of molds, kind of shapes your face. And then you get goggles that are custom made for your face and the perk i mean i haven't gotten them yet i just i just did the face scan they're being made right now gonna get shipped out um but kind of the deal is with goggles like there's a lot of foam on them and that's to kind of accommodate all face shapes and sizes whether you have a big nose a little nose big cheeks like that thick foam around the frame is to kind of compensate for that Mm. and with these new 3d goggles the big um draw to them is that you have like way way less foam because you only have foam where you need it so the goggles can actually ride way closer to your face you have better like peripheral vision um i don't know i'm kind of sold on them even though i haven't used them yet but i'm pretty excited to give them a go nice love that well how's your chassis yeah how's your chassis feeling going into 2024 i know you've had about 14 knee surgeries uh how's how's the suspension how's the suspension doing the suspension's good, but just because it, it hasn't been getting much use this year, I've kind of been low on the uh, day count. It's been a little bit slow in the Northwest, been a little bit slow, I think, everywhere for snow. Um, but this last week, it's like turned on like I've never seen it turn on before. The bachelor's been like shut down for a couple of days due to like crazy wind, trees are blowing over, and it's gotten like 10 feet of snow. So I'm pretty excited for this storm cycle to kind of burn through and start getting some, some reps in. Nice. Well, we, you know, you're an Oregon homie, you're Bend. We got a Hood River homie. We got Fitzsimons in here. You guys good? Like in those regions? Is there like a Bend, is there a Bend Hood River beef or are you guys, are you guys cool? 
No, I think it's all. No, right. he's just beefing because he always gets uh, this confusion of where he lives. So people always think he's from Bend, and then uh, he's like, "No, goddamn, I'm from High River." There's like Olympic stuff of people thinking he's from Bend, and everyone just gets lumped into Bend and Oregon. But he's uh, he's a win, Johnny. That is true. Hood River was pretty pissed when it kept saying Bend, Oregon on everything of mine. Well, Sorry you guys got Jonah Owen. You guys got does Dylan Thompson be, uh, Hood River? Yeah, he's hoodie. Yeah, you guys got some smackers over there. Hoodie, that's yeah. sick. Yeah. I that. mean, we got Sean as the contender for the number one, number one ultimate border in the in the world. So when <laughs> when they bring back ultimate border contests, we're uh, we're sending Sean for it as our best. Yeah, he's a contender. He's a threat. The kid's a threat. He's a threat. Okay. All right, uh, Austin. Well, le- uh, let us know how it goes continuing trolling Curtis. Um, that's going to be important. And then, you know, maybe send us screenshots so we can put them on the screen uh, as we talk about it. And and uh, yeah, yeah. let us know how it how it develops. So there's, there's some good ones from Zoe and Andrew Franklin. And if anyone else wants to get on there, feel free. Curtis Cizik, um, Snowmobile listed in Bend, Oregon. It's bright yellow. You can't miss it. 9500 bucks. <laughs> Feel free to throw out some low balls. Um, ask him about it getting up. caught on fire. Um, yeah, so get in on the fun, people. <laughs> All right, Austin. Thank you so much for calling in. That was a, that was a fun chat. Adios. All right, I'll talk to you. Bye bye. Um, one thing too, we're doing a giveaway. So they're giving away the Method helmet and the Squad Mag goggle. Uh, the Method helmet is feature packed, lightweight, minimalist helmet. Basically, it's got this zonal choroid stuff. I'm probably butchering it with MIPS, but the green stuff you see in the helmet really helps with impact. Uh, it's designed for ultimate integration with Smith goggles. So the, the goggle and helmet integration is really good. And then we're also giving away that squad mag goggle. So uh, be sure to comment on our YouTube of why you need a new helmet and a new goggle. And we'll may the best commenter win. We'll send you a goggle and helmet on our YouTube. Uh, on this video, uh, are you? Are you? Uh, did you pull it up? I found it. Yeah, on Facebook mar- Marketplace. Yeah, yeah, it's right here. Nice. How's it look? It's bright. The bright yellow. It's dragon. really yellow. Yep. There it is. It looks good though. Yeah. Unfortunately, he'll probably know it's you if you send him a message. You got to create a. No, burner. I'm not. You got to create. I'm a not going to blow their cover. Yeah, it's too good. We but need like a side healing tutorial yeah. or something <laughs> in the garage. <laughs> 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 hey, can you put it up on edge for me? I really want to see what the shocks are looking like. Dude, imagine just the video of him picking it up and dropping it, like to send it some civilian. <laughs> just, just put blipping the throttle a couple times. Oh yeah, that, that video good. exists actually. Pashley already got that one. Pashley got has a video of him revving it. I saw it. So um, good stuff. So also for you guys who are unfamiliar too, let's just we're way late in the show to do this. But Jay Stone, can you give us your uh, your title? God damn it! Again? Again? Yes. Every time you're on, we need it. we need it. Uh, senior global design engineer of snowboards for K2 Snowboarding. Holy shit. Ooh. You must get paid a lot, that title. Senior and global in, vo- in one. Wow. <gasps> Big time. Yeah, that's that's Put nice. some respect on it. Yeah. And also, Jay Stones, mm. or, uh, and uh, Jay Mo, Jordan Morris, he's a pro snowboarder. I don't know if we introduced that, but I'm just <laughs> clarifying that now. And then Fitzsimons, obviously pro snowboarder as well, Olympian, all that stuff. So just kind of, uh, and also just got hit in the face yeah, with his microphone. <laughs> Got a mind of its own. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Could have got a black eye looking like Curtis Cezik right there. All right. We got 8 million Instagram questions. Uh, we color coded these a lot for J Stone. But um, let's see what we got. Who we got? Sean. Here we go. We'll start with one for Sean. Sean, are the X game? This is from Board Jumps. At Sean, are the X game slope style riders as sick of the live ranking as I am? Like the like no scores is that what they mean? I don't <clears> even <throat> know what that means, honestly. I think what he means is not having the scores in there. Oh, okay, mm. yeah, that's annoying for sure. Because you're kind of like, how much worse was my like if you're below someone, and you're like, how much more do I need to step it up? You know, if you did, if it wasn't sketchy or anything, and the other homies wasn't sketchy, you're like. Do I need, oh, what I, do I, I would, need to do to they try? They don't to put the number; get, they just have you like in yeah. a ladder. Oh, yeah, they yeah, don't have yeah. the scores; they just no have scores, the rank. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. Yeah, that is a little I crazy. think people are yeah definitely bummed. Yeah, on you that. Could, and it you, doesn't. Sorry. Oh, yeah. you could just be like ten points off of somebody and be like, "Well, my run was almost as good," and you'd have no clue. And yeah, you're just in the dark. It doesn't yeah. hold the judges accountable either. Good Which point. Which is probably like, you can't like go and talk to me like, "Yo, what's good with that?" Like, do you think that's why they did it? 
Or why do you think I they think because they're that trying to just like rapid fire, rapid fire because it's a jam. But I still think you can put scores on it. But that's only for big air. No, that's for that's, slope. That's for, for slope. slope too. Slope, yeah. I think big air, big air. They do give scores though. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Okay, we got a question from Secret Combinations. We all know who that is. That's our boy Mo. Uh, this is for J Mo. How many front boards does J Mo? How many front boards does J Mo's knees have left? Question mark. Is curbing the ideal? It, hold on. This is <laughs> is curbing the ideal knee longevity. I don't even know what that means, but I think what he's asking is: Is the curbing company ideal for knee longevity? Uh, I am on my knees all day, and I just got double knee surgery in January, last January. So it may not be ideal. Probably don't want to be doing that for another ten years, but. If I'm still snowboarding, it's ideal for snowboarding because I work seven months out of the year. Why don't you explain to listeners what UVC is, and we'll slap it with some air horns. <laughs> All right. Time. So UVC is Utah Valley Curb, and it's just a concrete company I bought for my brother in 2019. And basically, it's seasonal, and I get all the snowboard homies who snowboard in the winter and just chill in the summer. So we got people coming in and out all the time. We got... Kale Zima, Joey Fava, Justin Phipps, let's see, Gavin, who works at Milo, and then we got Norm coming in every once in a while. We got the whole crew, Hulse? Tommy Towns, Jeff Holtz, mm. pretty much everyone who's bored one day and wants to jump on, Ryan Collins, they'll all just come through. So it's interchanging, a lot of homies, and it's a good work vibe, changes it up. I'll say I'm a happy customer. I have a UVC curbing at my house. Um, great job. You know, uh, 11 out of 10 would recommend to anybody. So it's like curb, a lot of it's decorative curbing, right? So like around your planter boxes, that's what I got going. Yeah, so it's just like a landscape curbing that separates the grass from the border, the planter. Makes yeah. the crib look nice. Makes you the got crib that. look fresh. That's yeah, value premium. skyrocketed after UVC came through. And so it allows you to, so then you can you can basically do curbing all summer, snowboard all winter. Yeah. I'm not a full time professional snowboarder, I'd say. So I get to take off four months in snowboard and it works out great. And then I got my other job. Nice. And then what was, uh, yeah, so he didn't ask about, he asked if it's ideal for snowboarding and you kind of answered that. Okay. Uh, let's keep it running. This is from. Shenty three four seven J Stone. What is the toughest part of engineering new board designs? <sighs> Trying to make something unique, uh, you know, fill say like a customer need, give a new experience or feeling when you're riding. I think that's probably the hardest part, and just not trying to copy something and or do the same thing over and over. Hard to do. Okay, this one's for Bon. How's the Hurley Snow Pro? This is from uh, Gala Galaco. Sorry, whoever that is. I butchered your name, brother. <laughs> uh, how's the Hurley Snow Program going for Sean Pitt Simons? The Hurley Snow Program? It's been good. Um, me, Brandon Davis, Hale, good crew of uh, homies on there. And yeah, it's been really fun. I just recently re signed with them. So looking forward to some more time Two with years. the Hurley Gang. Two year? I think so. It might have been three. The fits mm. are looking nice. Hale's got some clean kits. Yeah. Runky, the kits have been good. Runky line you up that deal? Yeah. Nice. How's Runky as an agent? He's the man. Couldn't ask for anyone better. He's the best. Runky's sick. We got to make that run through a wall smelling salts deal happen. <laughs> I know. Uh, all right. We had a good one. This one's from Lou Luland. Jay Stone, can you please explain torsional flex on a snowboard? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, this ties into Knut's question from the hot takes. But torsional flex, uh, the best way to feel it out is when you're strapped in. If you twist your feet, I call it gas pedaling, how easy or hard it is to twist the board with your feet. Um, and that goes into if the board's torsionally soft, it'll, like, release from a turn and be a little bit more forgiving. Or if it's torsionally stiff, it's going to be more locked in feeling to a turn. So kind of depending on your riding style and what you like out of a snowboard torsional flex can be, you know, a good or a bad thing for jibbing. It's really nice to have torsional flex because you can sort of like say back one onto a rail, you can kind of twist your feet for say, like a switch back one out, 
But if you're riding through like super choppy snow, like say at Snowbird or something, you probably want something torsionally stiffer. So it's going to hold an edge better. So it all kind of depends on what you're looking to get out of your snowboard. So yeah. And you can either do that with the core profile or if you do Trax or Biax fiberglass, and that'll change the torsional stiffness a ton. I'm curious with this, with you, Bon, when I feel like when I watch a lot of slope style guys like generate their spins, they like torsionally flex the board a little bit as they gen- do you do you pay attention to that when you're finding a board like torsionally soft? No, I usually try to go for like as stiff as a as you can do it, just kind of better for landings, you know. But I mean, you do kind of think about it in the way that you're like setting an edge. Yeah, know? and like one thing with the board you ride, if you look at the core profile, there's two spots right inside the bindings that are a little thinner. So you can twist the board a little bit easier to load it up for spinning, yeah. but then outside the contact or outside the bindings to the tip and the tail, super stiff. So when you put the landing gear down, it doesn't fold or anything. So did you design this thing? Stu? I did. Yeah. yeah. Classic. Yeah. Good board. Yeah. Yeah. Really like this was, yeah. I like it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Right. When Sean got on K2, that was like the, I, I was so hyped. Like, Oh, like having someone who's going to actually chuck on a board like this and started texting and it was like really sick to hear. Yeah. Which board is it? That board really sold me on K2 as well. Just like having something like, it's just it's a really good part. What's it board. called? Uh, the hypnotist. Oh, the hypnotist. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that was I designed it like at Woody's. It's like the kid who's in red Woody's and try to get better at snowboarding and like progress. That's the vibe. Mm. So pretty dope. Good stuff. All right, this one's from Jack Cornell. He wants to know what's the toughest kink rail Jordan Morris has ever faced. <laughs> oh, um, I don't know. I mean, there's definitely a few different ones. The toughest one was the C double kink or you'd call it a quad kink in montreal have you seen that one before yes front boarded it i went like three years before my rip popped my rib out with stark filming one year and then i went back randomly it was first spot of the trip i was randomly with like craig mcmorris and sam sosnowski and i was like fuck i guess this is the spot we're hitting and then luckily got it how many tries not that bad. I mean, definitely a battle, but not as bad as you'd think. I mean, handrails, you're hitting a lot, but it was probably like 20 tries or something. Mm. It's beast. All right, we got a hard-hitting question from J.P. Imhoff. Which way do you place stickers on your tail? Facing backwards or facing forwards? Wow. You know, you think about it. If you're riding switch, you want them facing you, or do you want it like you ride the board directionally? You say, basically, do you set your board up directionally or with your sticker job? Or uh, symmetry? I'd do it switch. Like, symmetry guy. Yeah, switch fi- Mir- mirrored. Mirrored. Yeah. Mirrored. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Not directional. Mm. But that's kind of sick to do it directional. I'm mirrored Never as well. I haven't thought I'm, about doing I'm, that. I'm mirrored, yeah. I think I have a board somewhere there. I haven't yeah. been uh, doing too much sticker jobs lately, but the board I have has one stickered and it's set directional. Directional? Wow. Yeah. Maybe I, yeah, I don't know. Depends on the board. If I ride a super directional board, I'll do like stickers of it yeah. facing mm. that way. But if it's twin, I'll go tip end mm. tail. You know, I think there's also an unwritten rule of sticker jobs too, where you have your you know, your marquee sponsors on your nose and on your tail, <laughs> and then you put the kind of the homie, you know, <laughs> the homie or the ones yeah, that, that ain't paying that good. They kind of go between the bindings. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's like a shout. <laughs> <laughs> or the homies, you know. But that prime real estate. I remember when it, like, it's, I don't know if it's with this, with your Hurley contract or anything, but I remember Monster used to be like the location of the sticker was in the contract of like where it needed to be in the location and all that stuff. Yeah, usually like, just knows yeah. is what you get a lot. Yeah, let's get let's get a uh, run through wall smelling salt sticker up on that nose. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I think it. We get you a helmet. It's wrapped in all bricks. We've talked about this. Yeah, you know, or you could take up the whole center real estate. Oh yeah, you bricks. can get the homies. Yeah, yeah. a Make big stack of bricks. bricks. Do I got to talk to Runky about that? Mm-hmm. Mm, you think it's gonna be expensive? You know, uh-huh. I think what we could do is a big incentive-based program. You know, you get on the podium and you have the helmet and you have the run-through wall bottle and you have the sticker job. You know, it's like a cash register going off when you're at X Games. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I, yeah, I kind of that's kind of where I'm at. You know, incentive-based no, incentive-based I'm down. package. Yeah, that'd be good. Are you? Uh, Actually, this is a good segue to talk about you just got injured, right? Tell yeah. Tell people what's going on. Yep. Recently at the Copper Big Air, uh, ended up putting a small fracture in my pelvis. So I'm kind of cruising. I think it might be IR um, year at least for competing, but still trying to get out there. and uh, For the whole year? 
Maybe. Fuck. Um, Because they're kind of saying 8 to 12 weeks. So that kind of puts me... February, I don't know. I guess I'll just see how I'm feeling as I get there, but... How'd you do it? uh, I was trying to front 18. And kind of my yard and kind of land on my hip. And that was kind of... You land deep? Yeah. Jesus. Well, I didn't even know it was... I didn't know it was busted, and then I got an MRI about a week ago because it was still hurting quite a bit. You might have to uh, head down to Tijuana, get a couple stem cells in there. Yeah, go T-Hall. Yeah, Yeah, go T-Hall. Yeah, that'd be sick. Yeah, get some stem cells. You'll be back in a week or so, Mm -hmm. max. Um, All right, we're going to – we'll go back to some Instagram questions, but I think it's good to talk locks open. We're going to call Mary Walsh here in a second. But maybe we go through – so just as an announcement, uh, at the bomb hole, we're going to be doing a live stream of the event. Basically, how it works is on Red Bull TV – we're going to have a feed in our studio. They're going to be giving us the live feed. Me, Mary Walsh, who will be calling in a few, and Jesse Burton are going to be calling Locks Open, which I thought you were going to be there. Fucking bummer. And our feed is kind of the dipshit feed. Like, we have fun. We are loose. Not that we're going to swear or anything, but there is there is a buttoned-up feed of, like, pros calling the tricks, and they wanted us to have a feed that's a little bit lighter. So that's January 20th. And uh, hyping up Locks Open. You won, didn't you, Sean? Mm-hmm. What year? 2020? 2020, 2021? 2022. 2022. We got the Locks Open winner. I think we should do picks for who we think we got for um, Locks Open because we have, there's no big air, but you have men's pipe, women's pipe, uh, men's slope, women's slope. Yeah, let's run through, let's just run through um, kind of like prospects for each one. So before everybody does their tics, tricks, or their picks too, rather. So we have Marcus Cleland, Red Gerard, Mons Roisland, you got Suyu Ming, you got Taiga Hasegawa, you got Tiarn, you got Nick Vander Belton, you got Luke Winkleman, Judd, Sven, and then Renee is a bit of a dark horse. Renee's back out there, so he could yeah. be a threat. And then um, we'll start with Men's Slope. I mean, who's, who's, everybody's, uh, who's everybody's one, two, three? Okay, let's go... Let's go Ming, Marcus, Red. Top three. I don't know the order of that, but that's my top three for men's slope. I'm going Cleveland Steamer, Curveball, Rene second, and then I'm going Red third. I was thinking Cleveland first. Wouldn't mind seeing a Mons podium. And then Rene, I think, because if he can land, he's got some crazy tricks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Rene's sick. I would be hyped if he put something down and then I mean respect to Luke and Tiaran because they were riding troll all preseason instead of hitting some big ass jumps so we'll see how that plays out yeah, <laughs> yeah that's that's gangs when you see the comp dogs hanging with the rail dogs all right then for women's we can run through we got uh uh women's slope we got Kokomo uh we got Iwabuchi huge fan we got Haley Langs Tess Cody Anna Gasser Annika, Mia Brooks, I think is there. And I heard Zoe actually recently got hurt. So Zoe's, Zoe being out kind of changes everything. So uh, why don't you run us through what you, who you got, Bon? Kokomo, and then I'm going Tess, and then I'm going to have to go uh, Layla Irabuchi. Mm-hmm. I like it. That's a good, good one. I'm going to go Dark Horse on this one. I think she's still on the waiting list, but I'm going to go Mia Brooks first. She's been on a tear this year. Yeah. She's been podium and everything. And then I'm going to go Kokomo, and then I'm going to go Iwabuchi for my third place. I think, I think Tess Cody's going, going yeah. numero uno for sure. And then I feel like Anna Gass is just going to put something up. She's, she's down to Chuck. And then yeah, I'd be hyped to see a little Mia Brooks podium. That'd be sick. Yeah, I'd go uh, Kokomo, one. And then Anna Gasser would be sick. And then three would be uh, Tess Cody. Like it. Okay, and then for pipe, we got men's and women's pipe. Let's run through those. Uh, obviously, like, if you guys haven't seen, that that just came out today, and maybe by the time this comes out, more tri- clips will be dropping. But someone who I've never heard of that his IG handle is Lil Taki. Just did back-to-back triple corks, which has never been done. That came out today on Instagram or yesterday or something. Uh, so he's a new threat. I don't know anything about you know anything about this guy? Bon? Oh, yeah. What's his deal? Bro, he's an animal. You should see him in slow. <laughs> it's like not even fair. Dude. This guy is unreal. And he's got ste on him too. He's like Really? Oh yeah. Where is he from? Uh Korea. Sick. Animal. Okay. Pipe and slope. Big air. 
He's a triple threat. Young? Is he pretty young? Young. He's Very got that young. dog in him. So would, would you say he has that dog in him? 17. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's got if that anyone out there has a dog in him, it's this dude. <laughs> oh, me. I straight hungry. up. <laughs> wow. He's Bon approved. Yeah. Okay. This guy's legit. So he's going back to back triple, and he's got that dog in him. And speaking of that dog in him, you got Gooselli, the goose. Valentino did a front 16 shot out of a cannon 40 feet in the air. Yeah. Homie's a problem. Crazy. He's a threat. Yeah, I like that nickname. I haven't heard that one. The, the goose. goose. I think that's a the Colonel goose. Kotzenberg original. Here, here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then uh, who else we got in there? Uto is always a threat. And then the Hirano brothers, Kaishu, you can bank on him going huge. Ayumu will probably definitely podium, maybe win. And then Scotty James, who's got a deep... <coughs> Scotty James has a deep satchel of tricks. You know what I mean? So uh, for men's uh, men's pipe, <laughs> oh, men's pipe, who we who we oh. look at? Oh, I'm just so Sean's excited. crying over here. All right, All right. fire it up after the smelling salt, Sean. Hey. Give me a one, two, three. A little talkie. Little talkie so number one. Little talkie's podium. I think he's gonna put those down. Wow. All right. I don't think he put. I mean, I think he put it on the Grammy. He's like, here we go. Watch this shit. I think that's kind of what's going on. Back to back trays, and then. Ayumu, and then Scotty. I think Scotty's Scotty fell at the Grand Prix um, in finals. I think he's kind of upset, so I think he's there's no way he's falling here. Yeah. Okay. You know, I gotta I gotta go with you know I'm gonna go off old reliable. I'm gonna go off consistency, and the names I always see on the podium. You got Scotty. I'm going Scotty James, and I I hope he breaks out the Sm- switch McTwist rewind. Yeah, word. And I hope he gets scored well for that. That's my take. Uh, and then I'm gonna go, you know, I'm I'm gonna go uh, Ayumu in second, and then I'm gonna go Lil Taki third. That's my podium right there. Ooh. But if Lil Taki lands back to back triples, he's gonna win. You but think? I like the consistency there. I'm going like, off that's consistency. That's a pretty. Yeah. But you think? If he does back-to-back triples, do you think Ayumo will try back-to-back triple? Because he's probably got it. He just hasn't yeah. filmed it or anything. I don't know. I feel like Ayumo would probably step to it. So I'm gonna. Ayumu's go. got that dog. In yeah, him. yeah. He's so. Well, that's sick. the only guy that's probably outmatching the dog. Little <laughs> <laughs> Taki. <laughs> dog fight. Straight up. Uh, so I'm going Ayumu first. Scotty James second. I just think homies. You gonna, hit, you gonna hit the goose for third? Who you got for th- Uto? You can't count out. Who you got for third? Uto. I, yeah, I'll go Uto. He's sick. I, he won dude, last year. Yeah, he won last year. I love watching him board. Uh, I want to see the brothers get a podium together. Mm, Kaishu. That would yeah. Be so sick. So Ayumu Kaishu and then Lil Taki. Yeah. Damn. That's amazing. That's that would be a good podium. That would be a good podium. And then lastly, we got women's pipe. Uh, not that deep of a field, you know. I, I don't think uh, Chloe Kim's not competing this year. So uh, obviously, Maddie Mastro and is it? Q got bodied too. Q got bodied. Yep, she's out. So she's out. So um, we got Maddie Mastro up in the mix. Uh, we got uh, Mitsuki Ono. We got B Kim. We got Gaon Choi. Um, so definitely, I think uh, Mitsuki Ono won last year. And uh, so that's, yeah. So I don't know. You got a podium on there. You know more than I do in this department. I might just go same podium as Copper. All right. I'm going to go Team America on them. And I'm going to go, uh, I'm going um, Mitsuki, or no, sorry. Uh, B Kim's American. And then Maddie Masters American. And then I'm going to go Mitsuki Ono third. So um, and we're going Team USA on this one. Uh, yeah, I'd say if uh, Maddie Mastro puts down double crippler. I'm going number one for that. And then Mitsuki, super sick style. And then B Kim, clean up with the third. I'm saying that B Kim is going to get first. Keep and it American. Then, yeah, Maddie Mastro. And then Gayon Chow. I don't know how to say that, but she rips. All right. That's, nice. that's it. Those are podium picks, predictions. Uh, tune in. Uh, January 20th, it's actually 5 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. So that's when the slope styles, and then 10 a.m. is pipe. And we're actually going to call Mary Walsh. So she's co-hosting. Let's see if she picks up the phone. All right, we got Mary Walsh on the line who's going to be co-hosting the Red Bull live stream for Locks Open. Mary, how we feeling? How we doing? What's happening? I'm good. I'm good. I'm just sitting here at home down in Southern California and excited to come out to the booth next week. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. You think this thing's going to be a complete train wreck or what? Because I do. (laughs) Well, you know, I think, is there a good kind of train wreck? 
Cause it'll, it'll be that like, maybe like it's a train wreck and it's not a train of chemicals. It's like a train of like gold coins yes. or something like that. And everyone's like psyched when it explodes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Basically if anything goes wrong, it's just kind of on brand. You know what I mean? Like that's on brand. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so, totally. Yeah. Just, uh, I, I think that's the best case scenario. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be great. So we were actually just talking locks open. We're excited about it. Uh, stacked roster. We found out that um, Zoe might not be competing though. A little bit of a bummer. I I was wondering about that, and you know, last year's winner, obviously, you know, one of the most dominant snowboarders in the world of anything that she does. So yeah, a bummer, a total bummer to have her uh, not there if that's what's happening. But um, excited to see what she's kind of got up her sleeve instead. Nice. Yeah, we got Bertner in the booth as well, so the energy should be pretty electric for that. We're hyped on that. Um, yeah, I'm excited to talk contest with him. That's going to be fun. Yeah, it'll be good. Once it gets up over like 12, what we have in the booth is basically a dart board, and we're just going to kind of throw a dart, and whatever spin it lands on is what we say. You know, that's kind of how we do it, Bond. <laughs> what do you think about that announcing style, Sean? No, that's smart. I feel like I'd be on the same program, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Question, you're the one doing it. Do you know what people are doing when you're watching it? Mm -mm. Like, if I'm like, wow, that looked like a lot, I'm like, that's probably an 18. But <laughs> and I just have to know how they, if they take off which way, and then I'm like, that was a lot. And they landed regular again, they took off regular, that was probably an 18. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. The so there's not a lot of confidence. Like, yeah, it's 18. Right? You throw a question mark at the end. That was a sick 18? Maybe was that eighteen? That was eighteen. Right? Yeah, that was eighteen. Yeah. <laughs> so you think the dartboard? You just go full confidence. Yeah. You know, it's a bit of a Jesus take the wheel situation. Yeah, when you're yeah, announcing exactly. slope style these days. Okay. Um, cool. And then Mary, you got uh, you got pick number uno for men. Directly, uh, let's run through. Uh, when you do first pick every event, men's pipe, women's pipe, women's slope. Oh, slope. dang. You want me to only go one for each? I have a list of like... Oh, you already made a list. Five to... Oh, my God. Well, um, we debated it pretty heavily earlier, so you can kind of keep it okay. tight. Keep it tight. Okay. You can do well, three. it's so hard. It's so hard with like, you know, obviously Zoe would be a favorite, but, you know, she's out of the picture. The field is heavily competitive in addition. You know, um... Mia Brooks is like really on one. She came in second last year. I'm sure you guys already talked about this. But then you have like Kokomo Marasi. I mean, Annika Morgan, Tess Cody. That's is that, I'm at three already, aren't I? Yep. Yes, solid. you are. It's, solid. I mean, it's, it's hard. <laughs> yes, you are. Solid. I feel right like there. yeah. That's I feel all like. I think women's slope is kind of an any given Sunday type of situation. I'm not sure if that's the right football metaphor. That's a great take, um, but. Uh, Okay, cool. And Haley Langland also will be there. Again, I want to throw her in there just because her style is so good. So she could be up on the podium too. I don't know. The women's slope style field is honestly one of my most, like personally, it's one of my most exciting fields right now because I think the level is just so high and the style is so good right now. So there's, you know, kind of anyone's game, I feel like. I like that. That's a hot take. Yeah. That's good stuff. I feel like the chicks are kind of the sickest point right now in slope style. Like where they're doing six yeah, twelves yeah. and like the occasional fourteen, but they're like st doing really steezy shit that still is relatable. I don't know if that's the right word, but you can be like, "Wow, that was really cool." Versus the dudes, it's kind of just like, "What the? What you know? was that? Yeah, that's <laughs> a lot." <laughs> but yeah. the chicks, it's so yeah. rad, and they like it's way more fun to like watch. Like you're saying, it can kind of be anyone's game, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I I totally agree with that. I think that's like exactly what's happening. And it's and it's cool because also, I mean, I guess this is in the men's side as well, but on the women's side, I feel like, you know, nearly every contest, there's like something that's never happened before and and it looks really good. So yeah, I'm really hyped. I'm really big fan of the women's slow style crew right now. Killer. Uh and then do you want to run us through what you got going on yeah. for um Beyond the Boundaries, actually? I was gonna I forgot to bring that up. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, for sure. So uh, Beyond the Boundaries is, uh, if anyone's not familiar, it's a women's uh, snowboard camp um, and tour operation that I run with Christine Savage. And we have a bunch of weekend camps going on. Oh, sick. <laughs> uh, we have a bunch of weekend camps coming up. We started, we kicked off with a ride day with Nitro Snowboards, our third one with them in December back in Loon, which was really exciting. And we're heading to uh, Tahoe 
um, next week, actually the same weekend as the LAX Open. I unfortunately won't be there because I'll be in the booth with you guys. But that's going to be really sick. And then we're also coming to Park City, going to Woodward Park City for the first time ever this year. Pretty excited about that one. And that's going to be the first weekend of March. I think it's the second and third. And then we have a bunch of other stops. If you want to go to uh, btbounds.com or follow us at btbounds on Instagram, we're going to Silver Star in Canada for the first time. We go to Mountain Creek every year. Um, yeah, they're, they're going to Japan um, in February. I'm not going to be on that crew, but they're going to get just like in it there. It looks really good over there right now. So yeah, it's uh, we have a full schedule, but uh, hop on over to our website if you want to join in. Sounds gangster. Sounds like a good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm, uh, yeah, I'm stoked to come out there next week and kind of do the dang thing with uh, with you and Burton or Chris. I think that's going to be awesome. And uh, um, I also didn't get to, I didn't say hi to the rest of you guys in the booth. I'm sorry, that was so rude of me. Oh, hey, good. Mary. Hey, how are we doing? Hey, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say hi to Silk D? Did you say hi to Silk? Oh, Silk, hi. how's it going? Oh, I, I bet your great. fit is on point right now Always. it is yeah it's a bit of a you. humble fit he's got a humble fit on it's toned back today <laughs> it's, the kicks it's are all time right now yeah we got the extra wide sketchers right now some memory foam it's a bad day to be a yeah. lawn or a it's grill like the, <laughs> <laughs> it's like a dad football coach yeah that's what we're going for today mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. it's working oh the, the bowl cut speaking hi- of football coaches oh yep what do you got? I did wanna I did wanna give my condolences and respects uh, to you, Chris right now. I saw Thank the you. news yesterday. You. I you know, I obviously heard he was coming. I'm from New England myself and uh, but you know, I, that tough, tough times, but respect to the respect to the game on Belichick forever. Yeah, you know, it's just grateful that we had uh, we had a great run with Billy B. I think I'm going to be snowboarding in some cutoff sleeve hoodies to honor Bill Belichick <laughs> for this incoming month if it stops snowing and we get to ride some park. I don't know if I'm going to do the cotton and the powder thing, um, but yeah, you know, just grateful for the time that we got to uh, have with Billy B. So, um, you know, air horn for Bill Belichick. Um, you know, <laughs> and this is where everybody tunes out of the show. For that's not nice amazing. <laughs> We also lost Saban. We lost Saban and Pete Carroll in the same fucking day, and uh, oh. yeah, I think a couple other coaches too, actually. But um, that's my knowledge doesn't go beyond Bill Belichick. I'm sorry, that's yeah. all I got. I sounded cool for a second, kind of, and now I I got nothing. <laughs> no, you still sound cool, Mary. Well, I'm excited for this train wreck that's going to unfold. That I can't believe Red Bull TV put some faith in us and our uh, pile of shit operation we have going on here with just trash <laughs> everywhere. And uh, they're like, hey. You want to do something? <laughs> anyway, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a beautiful disaster. Yeah. So it's going to be great. I'm excited to record European time from uh, from Salt Lake. I think that's only going to add to things. Yeah, yeah it's going to be really good. Yeah, our uh, our call time is 1 a.m. So we have to start doing prep at 1 a.m. and we go live at 5 a.m. So uh, should be good. Yeah. Mary's and uh, she's a late night owl though. She's got it covered. Yeah. I'm going to, well, I'm going to be good for about like the first, like maybe one and a half hours and then I'm going to crash. So mm-hmm. by the time it's five, I should be on point, I think. Well, we can just <laughs> annihilate run through wall smelling salts over the course of the entire night and we should be good to I go. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe some I mean, crystal we'll, meth. You know. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> just a jaw swing around like a typewriter point. on air. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, sorry, man. I'm just derailing you. That's not a good. We're not going to. No, do that. you're that's a joke. chilling. That's that's just. We're not going to do that. Let's not. Let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're doing great. It's hard to be on the phone because you can't read anyone like when they're about to say something, you know. So you're like, I feel like I'm sorry. I keep talking over you guys. It's oh, it's, it's. I'm very excited, but I'm like thrown off. I'm like, whoa, wait. I have no idea when anyone's going to talk. It's exciting. <laughs> well, cool, Mary. I think, uh, yeah, we're just going to do a quick check-in and uh, see what's going on. Cool. But uh, thanks for Perfect. calling in, and I'll see you in a few days for this this uh, Locks Open thing. It'll be a fun time. No, for sure. Hopefully that any there's at least a sentence in there that's, that's useful. <laughs> no, it was awesome. We had a good time, Chad. Cool. Sweet. Awesome. Okay, thanks so much, guys. Okay. Thanks, thanks Have Mary. Have a good time out there. Enjoy Bye, Mary. Yeah. All right, Bye, see, Mary. see you. Bye. All right, we're going to take a break and talk about Element. Now, please give a warm welcome to the new Element Chocolate Medley, a tasty trio of flavors featuring chocolate mint, chocolate chai, and chocolate raspberries. Designed to be enjoyed hot or swirled into your favorite recipes. Winter hydration matters too. We become less thirsty both in the cold weather and high elevations, but that doesn't mean we're hydrated. 
Optimal hydration requires right fluid to electrolyte balance to keep us feeling and performing our best. Go to drinkelement.com slash bombhole for free gift with purchase. Again, drink letter lmnt.com slash bombhole and you'll get a free gift with purchase. You get you gonna smack another smelling salt? All right, Bond's bringing us back in. Oh, yeah, I got smack. you one already. Oh, you got me one? Okay. All right. All right. Oh, he's going pretty deep in there. <laughs> yeah, Bond goes big. <laughs> yeah. Dude, oh, I he... feel like they get easier. They do, yeah. The first one, oh. they're like really oh. hit crazy. No. Uh, no. Uh, it's not easier. Ooh. 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 A, that's Ooh. a be somebody Ooh. situation right there. Ooh. 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 Oh. <sighs> okay. All right. Wow. Eyes watering. All right. Eyes Palms wide sweaty. Shut. Mom spaghetti vomit on my t shirt already. All right. Joey Fava wants to know. On Instagram, shout out. Let's give him an air horn. He wants to know, ask JMO who is the hardest worker on the Utah Valley curbing crew. Damn, I think he's just trying to get a shout out for that one. Is he? <laughs> Joey is beast. He is a hundred percent all the time. It's so sick. Who who kind of doesn't? Who's a little bit questionable sometimes? <laughs> I, that's what I'm more interested in. I mean, I wish I could think of somebody. The thing is, I've had like other people come in and they don't do well. But luckily, this situation, you're coming in. Luckily, these they respect me a little bit. They respect who they're working with. They don't want to, like, drag ass and be the one falling behind. So everyone kind of pulls their weight, luckily. He's dodging right now. Um, <laughs> that's that's a, that's a, that's I did. Yeah, yeah. 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 veteran dodging. Media, media training, just uh-huh. like, oh, what? Toss hey, it. I got to keep up, all my employees for next <laughs> <Yeah>. year. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how's Z- how's working with Zima? He's such a legend. He's sick. He just bosses up, smokes cigs all day, gets the job done. How many cigs do you think Zima puts down on a daily? I mean, I think he's had like before we show up at seven a.m. He's probably had five cups of coffee and three cigs. Wow, <laughs> animal. <laughs> Those are respectable numbers. Nice ratio. <laughs> yeah, that's a sure. that's a good ratio. All right, uh, let's see. What else we got? Uh, Jay Stone's got a lot of questions. We'll do some tech talk with Jay Stone, but uh, oh, this is a good one. This is from Bofa Lofil. <laughs> Bufa Lofil. Bofa. Bofa. Buf- Bufa Lofil. Bofa Bofa Are these, I, I think these are all burners. These are coming in. Sorry about butchering your name. It's a good question, Bofa Luffy Phil. Does Jay Stone have any tips or tricks to address delamination and or edge damage. Oh, yeah. That's another hot... Tips or tricks? That's a hot topic for right now. A lot of K2 delam, so that's the common (laughs) situation. Hey, now. (laughs) Lowest warranty rate in the entire industry. (laughs) Our shit's bulletproof. Just kidding. They make a good board. Um, Yeah. For delams, you know, you can... We did a little uh, P-Tex tutorial last time, but... Uh, you can definitely epoxy your boards yourself at home. Go get a nice marine grade epoxy. That's key. Stays flexible when it's cold. Uh, dry that sucker out after it delams. Uh, you can buy some fiberglass from the boat store where you get your epoxy too. Stuff a little fiberglass in the delam on the edge and slap the epoxy in there. Clamp it up. Let it cure for 24 hours. Clean it up and it should be good to go. And then for edge stuff. Sometimes, you know, you, you ping on a rail, dent the edge. Grenier's probably done a few of those in his day. <laughs> I'm familiar with that, yes. <laughs> you can, uh, you know, get the, get the flathead out. Sometimes you can hammer the edge back straight. Um, and then, yeah, you want to slap some epoxy in there. Or if, uh, you know, you smash your nose on a rock or you go uh, the classic Mike Rav uh, nose hook off a cliff. Uh, and you blow the nose up, you can just cut the edge out of your board, epoxy it, and it's all good. You don't really need the edge out in the tip and the tail. So that's a yeah, a little pro tip. The marine-grade epoxy is a key component there. Marine-grade, key, yeah. marine-grade. All right, we got a question from another name I'm going to butcher. Uh, Verhof Melanie wants to know Sean's hair products. Sean, you got any hair, uh, hair routine? Dude. It's kind of nasty, but I usually just run it like I'll probably wash it once every week and a half, and I'll just run it all natural. Because when I'm washing it, it gets all it gets like so frizzy and gnarly. We got to get you on fresh champ. You ever seen that Instagram? Mm-hmm. Is that still bumping? What's that? I, it's it's bumping. pretty much uh, every now like and again. Paul. 
Yeah. It has really nice hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. It's, a, it's an every now and again, you know, one of the homies who does a nice fresh champ, complete blowout, get it a clean photo. Yeah, when they yeah. come out, like, dr- dried right out of the shower, you can tell that thing's champed up. In the, yeah. in the B&B, just yeah. champed. Yeah, yeah, that'd be sick. Fresh champ. It's pretty niche. It's a pretty niche follow. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a pretty niche. It's a bit of a <laughs> niche It might also follow. be a private account, so it's yeah. a really niche follow. <laughs> That's an interesting one. This is from uh, St. Topher. Okay, I think I did good on that. Is the early 2000s outerwear style back? It seems to look like it on Hill these days. A little bit of a trend. That's a bit of a trend uh, forecast, 2024. Um, I'd say so. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the outerwear you're seeing looks a lot like Cool Borders vibes, 1080s, a lot of, you know, parkas, uh, colors from... I mean, shit, when I designed jackets, I just Googled dub outerwear (laughs) straight up, and I'm like, damn, those designs are cool. The yellow and gray is pretty fire. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. What are you? You're running some. Uh, oh, you got some L1 right yeah, there. Yeah, some L1. We definitely did do a couple dub copies this year. We got some nice yellow and gray. Actually, Clean. as you say that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's all. Yeah. Great. I mean, people are liking the baggy stuff again, and that's kind of what that comes from. I think this is a good one from Baldy is beautiful. Jeff Pensero, short people who rule. Um, first name that comes to mind, Mikey LeBlanc. Um, you guys, I mean, Bond's not not super tall. Uh, no. Bond rules, so I put him in that That's category. Funny. Thank you. Any other takers? Kale Zima. Ooh. Kale Ooh, Zima's, yeah. That's number big. one. Yeah. Uh, Austin Sweeten. Yep. Yep. That's a big short king right mm-hmm. there. <laughs> Bit of a short <laughs> king. <laughs> uh, honestly, uh, Danny DeVito. Yep. Wow. Funny guy. That's yep. a clean one. Louis Vito. Oh, yeah. Also. Yep. Well. Absolutely. Uh, Jake Cantor wants to know Sean's thoughts on Mulligan's Pub. I believe that's in Copper, right? Yep. Just a good bar for good times. Yep. Leave it there. Good place <laughs> to get absolutely shit house if you're in <laughs> Copper. <laughs> yes. Had a couple of rough nights there back in the day. Fun joint. It's from Jesus Wheelie. J Stone, any plans for edgeless street boards like the forum, like forum used to have? Ooh, I actually just tooled one of these up for Auntie Yusilla in Finland. Maybe. Could be sick. He hits a lot of wood rails, so he wanted a edgeless board to tool some stuff up. A lot of people are uh, building the aluminum rails in the city, so yeah. maybe that's going to be the push. Oh. I could have, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but I, I swear, like, as, uh, you know, Arrow Etela used to backlip like big ass wood rails and shit. Yeah, yeah. I think he used to do that with edgeless boards. Is oh. that, do you guys know if that's. I'm not sure if that's true. I know Anto was getting edgeless boards to yep. try some spots. Anto Chamberlain. Yep. I got one of those off him and instantly slipped out when I hit her L. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It, was, it felt weird. <laughs> so just to provide context for <laughs> listeners that don't know, Forum used to make a board called the Street Dweller, and it was a price point snowboard that was all black base, edgeless snowboard, and it was like J.P. Walker made it for people that want to slide in handrails. They probably sold about four of those in, in the entire... <laughs> No, but so that's kind that, of a go straight scenario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, edge is pretty key for turning. Yeah. Would you say, Jason? Uh, it helps. It helps. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. We got a question for everybody here from Sammy Don. Industry goat question mark. Not a rider. Done does the most that does the most in the background for snowboarding. I got a few names. I'll throw out Canute. Canute's up there. He also does it for snowboarding as well, all around beast. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go Trevor Brady and Jeff Richards. Ooh, great mean, names. Yeah, those are the best. Mm-hmm. They've done a lot. I mean, I think a lot about. Uh, I think Benny Pellegrino comes to mind. Yeah, that's a good big one. time. He got my start. He grew up Utah County. He's the man. Mm-hmm. He's helped so many people out and has got everyone's back. Like seriously, the best dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got Dangler, you got Johan, you know, I think there's so many, every single brand, like, you know, no matter what snowboard company there is, there's forward facing people that are pros and that you see in the videos. And then there's the people behind the scenes doing spreadsheets and going to zoom meetings and like running the brand that do so much for snowboarding that, that doesn't, you know, doesn't get seen. So, um, that we could talk for 40 minutes about kind of behind the scene goats, but you got anybody Bond? Uh, I was going to say, like, Runky. I don't know. Yep. That's the... I mean, that's Run- the answer, actually, yeah. yeah. 100%. Yeah, and we will think of all the ones that we should have said when we leave here, because that's what always yeah. happens. Okay. Um, 
Joey B, how you doing? Another behind the scenes go. Well, he's kind of in front of the scenes. Wants to know, has Jay Stone ever used olive oil to tune his board? Highly recommend it. Mm. Never used olive oil, but to actually snowboard on. But if you're trying to get a nice, crispy base photo of a snowboard, slapping some olive oil on there makes all the colors pop. It's a, that's a little pro tip for photos. So you, ha- so you have? I have, just never snowboarded on it. Mm. Yeah, so I got to try that. I like that. Okay, uh, this is from 3Rick4 Anderson. Why can't snowboarding come up with an annual competition that crowns a world champion? <sighs> bon, you want to field this one? Why can't somebody come up with a... With a competition that crowns a world champion. I guess like WSL style. Well, well, I don't I'm know. guessing... I mean, technically, I Fist, lack of money, you know? Well, Fist technically does that, but nobody gives a shit. Yeah. Like they do that. There is a World it's Cup. It's hard world. when you yeah, yeah. When you can't <laughs> when you can't watch it. Yeah, that makes it hard to really follow the tour. You know, yeah, um, but it does. Like you said, to answer his question, I think it's it's a go. money thing. You know, I think I think that'd be rad, but I just I don't know. I think there just needs to be like an influx of money that comes in to try to make it. But I think it's definitely a scary thing to try when you're looking at it from the outside. But I think you could see it work. Yeah. But I think it'd be hard to be like, look at this business model and be like, yeah, let's try this. It just had to be, it'd be a risk, but I think there's enough passionate people out there that it would work, but it just would have to take someone to Do take you think we need, so you have natural selection that's it's, its own tour, yeah. and then you have Fist that does all the, the competitive slope style and half pipe. Do we need a new, like a new contest series and like start from the ground up? Or do you... Is that what you think the solution yeah, is? Yeah, I think at this point, honestly. I mean, I also think it'd be hard. It'd be hard to do, if we're like trying to encompass like everything, I think that'd be hard if you're talking like slope style. Because um, I think it would, if you tried to encompass everything, those riders, that's what they would do. That would be it. Like you wouldn't have any time to go and film or do, like I think you'd see projects fall off if a tour like that were to happen, you know, if you brought everything, if you tried to encompass like the the triple crown is what he said. Yeah, or like just basically a world champion. Like, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I think it just, I think it'd have to be a full new deal. I think you'd have to separate from the Olympics because the Olympics kind of make it weird um, with the starts, you know, because like you only get a certain amount of starts per country and the U.S. is super deep. And Canada's super deep, Japan's super deep. But, well, to give you some background, I guess, we really want to dive into this, but um, majority of the U.S. team is in the top 30 riders in the world for slope style. But we only get, like, seven spots. So let's say you're at 25 and you're the eighth U.S. rider, then you can't compete in the World Cup. But there's 60 dudes that drop into that course. And you're the 25th, but you can't because there's not enough country spots for your country. So then a smaller country might get some more spots, and they might have someone that's ranked outside of 60 that gets to compete over the person that's 25th. So like that's where, and that's because it's an Olympic thing, so you have to include countries. So that's where the the and that's the non Olympic year World Cup steamed. Yeah, exactly. Crazy. And that's where it's flawed. Instead of being like like the U.S. Open, you know, take the thirty two riders. You look at the list. Okay, these are the top thirty two slope style riders ranked. They've earned these spots. Boom. <clears throat> Let's have a contest. You know, and that's why it's the sickest contest. Oh, is that how it, I never knew that? Yeah, U.S. Open. They just go okay. Thir- they go uh, World Snowboard Point list. You can look it up online, and they go okay. Oh. Top 32, and then just, psh, and then they have like alternates, people get injured, you know? But so then the contest is so legit because it's just the top 32, and you're taking the top 32 of slope style riders, it's kind of anyone's game, you know, any given Sunday type of situation. Obviously, you have your hitters, but you where, know, you, where are you at on that list? Is it, where are you at on the points list? I'm this? 20th right now. Whew. But mm-hmm. I was like scrapping for spots this year with being 20th. Yeah. So, because yeah. U.S. team, you got Luke, you got Jake, you got yourself, Judd, you got Judd, Dust. you got Brock, you got Dusty. Mm-hmm. 
Red. You got red. <laughs> yeah, like look at that's fucking. Yeah. You got corning as well. Yeah, corn everyone dog. deserves to be there at all contests. Yeah. It's crazy that they don't change it just for like an Olympic year to be that format. Because like with surfing, it's just whoever's the best gets to be in the contest, and then for mm-hmm. Olympic years, you qualify into the Olympic team. But if you are the best surfer, you get to surf, and, and yeah. that's how it should be. And it's confusing because it's very possible to do it on the Olympic year. As a country, you can make your own parameters on how you qualify those athletes, you know? Like, that year, like, for us, it's always a little bit different, but usually it's, like, two top threes in a qualifying event, and you know what the qualifying events are. They're usually in the U.S. And then after that, if that doesn't happen, then it goes to points on the points list. So you can still do that on the Olympic year, and the the countries can still set their parameters for their athletes. So it just gets confusing when you're like 20th trying to get spots. It doesn't necessarily, drop like in. you said, make the best snowboarders in the world. It just makes sh- you have the most representation from every brand country in the world. But that exactly. doesn't mean you're having the best snowboarders in the world. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. I just learned something new. Um, <laughs> all right. We got a question for JMO. This is from Seth Hewitt. Oh, Seth Hewitt should be mentioned on the behind the scene oh yes, big time guy. He he the has, Jenny hit a did, Jenny pop uh, two days ago right and, oh yeah that's where you want to be that's nice so uh, J-Mo let's talk about the spot and the early season beat down you put, up, put on up there I actually only made it up to the spot twice this year unfortunately but uh, that place is the best they pimp it out Jeremy and Seth holding it down mainly now and it's just ready to go when you show up. Just a super mellow set. Little down bar, little flat bar, bunch of homies, good vibes, and you kind of just get in the groove. Mm-hmm. And Are then you-, you got like, yeah, I showed up one day, and it was just Seth, Jeremy Jones, and J.P. Walker, and you're like, okay, how am I not going to be fired up? Like, mm-hmm. That's insane. Favorite riders yeah, growing up. that's elite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely an elite elite location. Now, uh, are you filming a part this year? What's your game plan? Uh, I don't really have any plans. I am coming off a double knee surgery from last year, so kind of easing into it. I actually did get in the streets yesterday, first clip of the year, Woo! which was a rebate from last year, the last thing I tried, which I got bodied on and then kicked out. So we're hitting the ground running. I think I'm going to go... Next week to meet up with Ben Bilodeau in Ooh, Iowa. Dang. Wow. So everyone goes to Oslo, Japan. We're hitting <laughs> Midwest. <laughs> Midwest luxury. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hitting the truck stop. Hit truck stop down bar in Iowa. That's the way to do it. Now, uh, one thing I forgot to mention, we were talking tail blocks the other day. Uh, we were on a tail block kick last group chat. We were just all j- jacked up over tail blocks. Uh, and, you know, we talked about some of the great tail blocks that have gone down and I totally slipped on yours at Rail Gardens. The up, was my, up, oh, up yeah. the stairs, oh, tail block, that's, and then boardy the rail. Yep. That's a that's a Hall of Flame Hall of Fame tail block. Yep. And you're that's not a, you're not a token tail blocker. So no, that might be that. the only one I've ever filmed, actually. Where'd you come up with the idea for that? Uh I don't know. Just spending a lot of time at Rail Gardens and think of something new to do. But like a couple years prior, I kind of cheated and like tail blocked and put my hand on the rail. Then I was like, I could probably just pop. I think it was kind of Cole Maven inspiration too. He did like the tail block, tail block into the rail, then pop over it. Yep, nose block. And so I was like, okay, once you're in there, you can kind of load it up pretty good. Wow, I forgot about that one too. That one was so good. Yeah. Um, now that's a good another subject. Rail gardens shut down, right? It did shut down. The last time I went, I went with Max Tokunaga, and we did get tickets. You got tickets. So I don't know. Hopefully it changes. I'm wondering what's up with it this year. I'm giving it a couple days before I go there, yep. but hoping it opens back up. Yeah. It's like the glory days of Utah and like powder. Like right now we have snow on the ground. It's, it's, it was the best place ever. It's perfect handrails everywhere you go. No kick out. You bring your dog. Like it would be for me. Just go take my dog on a walk oh, yeah. and then do a couple switch front boards. You know what I mean? It's fucking awesome. Oh yeah, I hear uh, Stark was trying to do a petition to make it like a historic monument of Salt no Lake City. Yeah, that was a couple of years ago, right, right when it started shutting Dude, down. But what, what was good with them shutting it down? Why did that happen? I think somebody, I don't know, rumor has it, somebody just like walking, which is kind of crazy because to begin with, this park isn't maintained in the winter at all. So snow everywhere, but I think somebody broke their leg going down the rails and then 
sued the city and then the city had to step in and kind of be like, wow. okay, we can't have all this. But it had nothing to do with snowboarding. Yeah. And I think that that's, the thing is like just people, a lot, what happens is Salt Lake's more populated, more people walking their dogs, people are snowboarding and there's just, people are angry in their life and they take it out on other people. That's my theory. Sidebar though, when, when rail gardens was starting to get shut down, I remember I, I got all jacked up to try to, I was like, we could, you know, rally and try to save this thing. Right. And I remember I called Ken Block and I was like, Ken, like, I remember you did this big thing with Love Park in DC back in the day. And it would be so cool to get rail gardens as a thing that's just like a public park where you can snowboard and all this. And Ken fully talked me out of it. He was like, look, man, you're dealing with government people. They don't give a shit. All they care about is covering their ass. Like we offered the city of DC a million dollars to save Love Park and they didn't care. Like he's like, you're dealing with government employees that are just like cashing a paycheck and they just don't want to lose their job. So they're not going to go out on a limb for fucking anything. And so it was interesting that like, I, I kind of, I've never shared that on air or anything, but it was an interesting deal, like picking Ken's brain about the whole thing. And he was just like, yeah, I don't I, know. I think, uh, it would be sick if vans could find a way they're, they're sitting good with the community, with the van skate park. And yeah. they did the same yeah. thing that's true. in Ooh. Toronto or wherever that's at. Yep. Yeah. The Ojo park. Yeah. The yeah. Ojo park Has in that, Montreal. They were talking about it a while ago. Is that yeah. still happening? I haven't heard any yeah. news, but that would be the person who could do it since they're already on such a good basis with the Utah sports c- community. Have you guys been to Innsbruck? Yes. Yep. Dude, that's kind of like what, that was kind of Salt Lake's plot. So in Innsbruck, they have that skate plaza that's in literally in the middle of the city yeah, and you can so just fun. skate like they're down yeah. and you can grind or whatever do whatever you want in the skate plaza mm-hmm. but it's not technically meant for skating yep that's kind of like the rail gardens to salt lake but i guess that's kind of the difference between europe and the u.s you know like the liability and the fact that you can just sue like whenever you want in the states versus in europe you can't but it is such a bummer because that was kind of Salt Lake's plaza that Innsbruck had in Austria. At the end of the day, when you look what's happening, it's a bunch of people, a lot of, of us strangers that become friends because we're all, there's 50 of us hiking a double line of a uh, eight stair into a 12 stair, whatever the fuck it is, right? It's like, th- that, what's better than that for community? And it just sucks that we're so, uh, you know, liability based. It's like, all right, well, I'm not going to go snowboard. I'm just going to go sit and stare at a fucking TV in my house now instead of going snowboarding. It's, Dude, so, it's, much better to, it's so much better to just have, have met homies in Innsbruck at the skate plaza and then gone with them and skated and became homies and went and skated the skate park over just like got on the bus, you know, five minutes away. But met homies in a different country just from them having that skate plaza there for everyone, mm-hmm. which is wild, which would, could be that. Totally. Totally. That's good shit. I like that. Um, ask Bon. Lucas Ferry wants to know, ask Bon about his first 18 attempt in Sauce Fay. Oh, dude, I flat back. That's when I tried That's to do a <laughs> tail. Yeah, I was like, it was like so fried, dude. I like went up, kind of just trying to be somebody because we're in sauce, and it was just straight up glacier landings with the cat ribs. It was like, the snow was like hundreds of thousands of years old. Like, glacier. <laughs> the worst snow year they've ever had. Dude. It was we're talking <laughs> prehistoric We're talking, we're talking ice age. Prehistoric dude, ice like age landings. brick. That, that squirrel from the ice age was trying to find its nut on that <laughs> on that landing, dude. You were trying to find a nut with the 18. Yeah, actually. And I, but I went off, did like two 14s, felt really sketchy, and then just tried one because I was like, it's not going to get any less scary. And then I flat backed and that was kind of it. Wow. I have the clip. Yeah, we'll yeah, put we're, it, we're we'll gonna put it on need the screen. Yeah. yeah, did you go like pancake lung grape lady in the landing? Yeah, what was your? I was kind of like, no, I actually, I kind of got clean out of it. I'll show you, but it was kind of one of those you go off the lip and you're like, dude, this is not good. Just but, fucking boomeranging through the but air. But you kind of just have to like get to some point where it's chill. This is not good. I'm flying through the air right now. <laughs> 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 but I sure do love big newtons. Yeah. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah! Do you have enough time to be like, "This is going to suck"? Mm-hmm. You know oh, that yeah. feeling That's when so you're crazy. like, "Yep, you miss your snap." Yeah, off the lip, you're like, <laughs> 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 "Buddy, <laughs> 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 dang it!" <laughs> you got a couple seconds to just kind of be like, "Who, buddy?" Yeah. 
Uh, Devin McCoy wants to know the classic have you ever shit your pants snowboarding uh, story. Do you have one, Bond? I feel like you would be one to have one. No, I actually don't think I have. Board control. I mean... I shit my pants last winter. I think I told it on air. <laughs> really? Yeah. The back one knuckle. The back one knuckle. Oh. Yeah, Woodward. Yep. <laughs> the best part about that is Jack said you went up to him and was like, the photo's good, right? And he's like, <laughs> you're, about to, you're about 10 feet lower in the air than you should be to make the jump. You should probably redo it. You know, it's also humiliating shooting photos with Jack Dobb because he's an incredible snowboarder. He's, oh my and God. So he could dude. probably back 10 the jump. And you, when you go and he's shooting you and you back one and you, you don't knuckle, you deck. You're and like, he'll he'll fake be hype for you, like yeah, that yeah, was so sick. Yeah, no, you know yeah, he's just yeah. like you. He gets frustrated and he'll be like, I "Fucking just go do it myself." <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. like yeah, we know, dude. You're good at everything. Yeah, that's good stuff. Uh, all right, N Hugs wants to know what's the cutoff temperature for too cold to board? Any takes on that? Colorado. <laughs> dude, <laughs> winter. Final Colorado. answer yeah. that is Rado. The, in, the entire state all winter in Colorado. Yeah, until March first. I'm saying six degrees. So you got a hard number. Yeah. All right. I think it goes by feel good. like it goes science based. Though. Yeah. The wind yeah, can true. screw you over. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I think just when the snow gets like styrofoam squeaky, yeah. then it's time mm-hmm. to call it. It's yeah. just going to lodge at that point. It just feels like you can break. Yeah. Like, when you like, when you have that You're, feeling that you could shatter. Yeah. Like, it, you just feel like to brittle. me, it's not, you know, if you're filming, it's, it's actually the ones that are really fucked are the filmers and photographers. Yeah. You're moving, you're sweating. True. The motion is the lotion. Let me tell you that with the motion, when you, when you get out there, you get moving, you get shoveling, it could be minus whatever the fuck doesn't matter if you got good gear. And then when it's time to snowboard, you kind of like put a little bit less gear on, but the photographer standing there taking the picture that they're at a health, they're a health hazard. Yeah. I will say this though, and this might be important for anyone that's going into the back country. There is like a certain point where you should look at the how cold it is and be like, we're not gonna go, we're not gonna go out and try to do stuff because like, if something does happen and someone does get actually hurt, like let's say breaks their leg, they go hypothermic real quick out there. Mm. You know, if it's like in the negatives, maybe just take that day off. Um, yeah. Chris Rasmus was actually talking about a story when we were up in Baldface, and Did you they, just go to the you just went to the risk. Yeah, the yeah. Okay, continue. Sorry, and. Uh, he was talking about they went out, um, buddy, a homie got bodied, and it got like pretty gnarly pretty quick when it was like, you know, sunny day, but it was like so cold and you start losing heat when you're not moving, like insane. So if you're going out there, maybe like that's something to think about. You mm-hmm. know, if, like resorts different, obviously. Yep. Streets are a little bit different because you kind of have access to heat and everything, mm-hmm. but when you're going out like two hours out, you know, or just away from help. Totally. Definitely something to keep in mind. That's definitely like uh, high risk stuff when you're you're snowboarding in the mountains and people get hurt. Like your temperature goes down very quickly, like you said. Mm-hmm. And that's like we always in our packs have those those um, bivvies and everything. And like, you know, definitely when your homie gets bodied, make sure you keep them warm when they're yeah. on the ground because oh, yeah. that's something that, that can like, save their yeah. life. Yep. That's number one. Yeah. Uh, all right. We got one. This one's for Stoon, but we can all field it. Kev Mac 8. Are step-in bindings just for old people? Nidepker, supermatic, question mark. Yeah, this is a sick one. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of debate on this, but I think anything that w- gets people into snowboarding and makes that barrier to entry easier, you know, or like say someone who's older, who's like, oh, I can't snowboard, whatever, but the step-in makes it easier for them to go snowboarding and want to snowboard. I think that's amazing. So, I mean, for me personally, I like strap bindings um, and I'm going to continue to ride strap bindings. But if you're just, you know, that like average ripper who wants the convenience of a step in, I think that's awesome. And that's going to make you want to snowboard more. Sure. Run it up. Okay. I like it. Um, yeah. Have you seen those Nidecker bindings? Yeah. They're, so they're, you don't, they basically like, it's almost like a, basket right that's like, like a bear trap it's like a yeah. bear trap that yeah. as you step into it it like clicks yeah it's like a you guys know flow bindings or like mm-hmm. the rear yeah. entry so yeah. it looks like a rear entry flow binding but then there's this little like bear trap thing that you stomp on and that flips your high back up for you oh okay yeah pretty cool 
I don't know. I, they look a little difficult to get out of, but getting in, I think. Looks and so super that easy. one works with any boot. Any you don't boot, need which special is boot. yeah, which is cool. You engineering some of those up for K Deuce or what? Yeah, we got Clicker X, XHB <laughs> dog. That shit's all day. Is that an actual thing? Yeah. Or? Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Clicker Clicker XB <laughs> module. Hit them. They're Sounds good. Phenomenal. I remember when those things first came out. They were a real hit. <laughs> That's why we read it. Snow's just frozen in them and you can't get them on. (laughs) Also, my dad used to have those pucks. Yep. No yeah. high back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, those are OG. Rent, yeah, that's it was like kid. the funniest thing ever. <laughs> OG dude. clickers. Yeah, that yeah. one I would have. Like it ices over, and you think you're in. Like the super <laughs> old school ones, then your yeah. foot falls out. So they've they've <laughs> come a long crazy. way. Yeah, the new ones. Are I don't running. think they're like that anymore. It also looks fucking insane with no high back. <laughs> it's just a boot like glued to your oh, fucking yeah. board. <laughs> you're a <Dude>. dragon pant, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Running over your pants with your heel edge. <laughs> Dude, I saw, oh, saw like a, probably a thirteen-year-old kid just severely knuckle a jump at Woody's the other day. Complete blow out of the step on. <laughs> oh yeah, full one leg out. Look, it was so insane. That's insane, yeah. dude. Cool. Uh, another thing we should talk about. Uh, you guys were there. Dust bomb. Did you go, Jason? No. Nope. Oh, JMO was there. Oh, yeah. 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 We did an event at Park City. We uh, teamed up with the Dust Box called the Dust Bomb Ride Day Rail Jam. Kind of a shit name, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't figure out how to make that name work. Yeah. Well, I had, like, we were, like, bomb dust, hole, like, I don't know, dust bomb, whatever. Great so, event, though. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that. And, yeah, the concept, we rode in the afternoon, and then we did uh, open rail jam, and then we did a pro rail jam. Kept it easy, no registration. And then we had live music with Harry Hagen's band, uh, which is Harry. Oh, yeah. Mike, Mike uh, and Harry? Yeah, the, Harry and the Mikes. <laughs> yeah, Mike Rav and uh, Mikey LeBlanc. And then the other band was, was it Eardrum? Yeah, they're so sick, the yeah. younger kids. Yep. They're so, in. yeah. Do you know, are you familiar? I don't know them, yeah. but I've seen them once other, one other time with uh, Phipps band. Yep. Phipps and Gap year? And Gap year. Gap year, yep. And the concept was just having like, thrashing bands and people snowboarding and it worked it was fun so um, a lot of energy a lot of good energy yeah it was fun um, I saw J-Mo get in the mix have you noticed that a bunch of bassists are bald dudes I haven't I haven't <laughs> noticed that <laughs> majority of bassists really? you'll see Mike LeBlanc, yeah. yeah. Mm, Mike LeBlanc, the Nickelback bassist. Oh you big Nickelback guy I went I went to a concert this year it's <laughs> yeah. so sick dude <laughs> My dad played bass. He's bald. Nice. Damn. My brother plays bass. He's bald. Holy shit. I'm telling you, dude. Yeah. You know, oh, I think d- Jeff Amet, mm. Pearl Jam, bald. Mm. Do you know a ba- do you know bass face? Have you ever heard about bass face? <laughs> dude, if you look like <laughs> bass like face stinky. is a thing. Like certain oh, for some oh, yeah, reason, like, bassists <laughs> make like fuck. What up is it? I love you, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Slap it a bass. Slap it a bass, man. Totally. Yeah, Flea's bald too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he please. had hair. He might be bald now. Yeah. yeah. You slap a little bass? <laughs> I tried. <laughs> yeah. But I still had hair. Oh. So, yeah. yeah. That's I'm waiting. Yeah. Give it some time. 20 yeah. years it's from now. Go. How yeah. old are you, Bon? Be... I'm 23. Whew. Good age. I mean, How old are you guys? 32. Good age. Just turned 30. Oh, shit. Young buck. Dude. 30? What about you? I don't know. Dude, I'm, I just turned 24. <laughs> yeah, you're looking clean. <laughs> yeah. I just looking... celebrated my 15th annual 21st birthday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just looking. It's a contract year, so just got to let them let know we're still here. You're, we're you're spry. We're spry. How many days on hill? <laughs> dude, that's actually sad. <laughs> People are like always, oh, dude, I've, I've snowboarded on hill <laughs> three days this year minus my mammoth trip. Mammoth, I was on snow for like a week. We had a clean day at Woody's the other day. Oh, <laughs> the day you ate yeah, shit immediately? Yeah. <laughs> Tooled up a couple front fives, though. Oh, oh, yeah. That was all day. Oh, yeah. That train's never late. Yeah. Let's be honest. That train's never late. I claimed cab nine on air, though. <laughs> I got to start doing road to cab nine. Any pointers, Sean? I've done them before, but... Cab uh, nine? Yeah. You got the wrong guy. <laughs> uh, wait, oh, yeah. Can we get the can we get the switchback nine tutorial? Yeah. So can you talk oh. about... Uh, Cause like I I I don't know I was tr- riding with Jack Coin the other day and he's like oh yeah like for that trick I break at the waist when I do like switchback whatever and like explain kind of like if you're spinning flat versus breaking at the waist trying to like flip it more you never yeah. you never want to break at the waist okay then this, okay because <laughs> that's, right, cause that's what he said and I was like that sounds like I'm just gonna immediately go upside down if I try anything like that yeah you just you want to stay 
I don't know. You stay stacked. Yeah, yeah. They give, send it over you, your board. Give you know us what you the should do? Okay, here tutorial. you go. Yeah, like, I love this. You know your board, the what torsional, you know, torsional flex? Yeah, yeah. Think about that. Yeah. And like separating, like, and you're almost like flexing your board, like your back foot is kind of in here and like stay stacked up with your chest. Yeah. But as soon as you go like this, you're, you're done. Yeah. Like it's, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't want he was bending over. <laughs> was bending, you yeah. don't want to go head below the ass. No, a, and try to. You're gonna have a bad time. Something like if you're, are you trying to flip? What are you trying to do? Are you trying to I stay flat? Try to land a switchback nine. Yeah. Time, what, like. You think you think flipping or okay. staying flat's easier? Uh, probably staying flat, but kind of don't fight it though. Yeah, if yeah. it does flip, yeah, yeah. You know, because then you're just gonna be confused. Because that. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's going to want to come around at some point. It's going to work. Would you break it down to switch back five, back three? Or front three? Switch no, back five, switch back five yeah, front switch three. switch back five, front three. Or, that's how you break it down. Or, right? or you can like, switch back one, front seven. Or is that nah, two? Yeah, that's nah, two that's, halfway in between. You got to think about like a switch back five. Yeah, yeah. And then just keep holding on. Switch back five. And you could even do a go like switch back five. And then it might want to do a crippler. You know, but uh, that might be, but that's chill if you just let it do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what people get mixed don't fight up. It. Yeah, don't just fight it. People Side get mixed down. up because they'll like start to go again. And obviously sometimes, yeah, maybe bad news if it goes again. <laughs> but for the most part, it's going to come around yeah. naturally to where it wants to go. But that's if you had a good takeoff. Yeah, yeah. You know, but if you like go off the lip and you just like throw down and like bend at the waist, you're just going to be like flipping and heli dicking and lost and you're not gonna be able to pop you're that's the like, big that's thing like if you misty. don't pop if you don't pop you have snap. nothing the snap yeah. yeah and then you have no control over the trick you can't slow it down or speed it up you're just kind of a part of the trick so you're basically saying use the board torsional flex stay upright and okay. then snap and go across your shoulders and then yeah crack. you almost want to watch like watch the nose of your board leave have you ever heard this? And then the aim, like, so this is the tour gear told me this, but like I was asking him about cab nines or whatever because he can do them like crazy. And he's goofy. So he'd be coming up the, the lip regular on his heel edge. And he's like, I just aim right. So he's like, like you said, like, oh, yeah. Just, like, like, I think that helps set up your setup turn. I think about that front side. I think about that really anytime I spin, but just aim the direction you're mm-hmm. kind of the opposite direction of hooking, really. Yeah, right? yeah. Yes. And that's also a big thing a lot of people on switchback. This will cause you to end up um, bending at the waist. Is you're com- you're coming in on your heels, but you're gonna feel comfier switch toes. So you're gonna get to your toes too early, yep. and then you're just gonna be cruising on your toes. And then by the time you're off the lip, you're like in a full carve. You're going boomerang. And then you're then it's are also done. And then you're gonna be like bending at the waist because you're like going on this crazy uh, trajectory instead of like long heels and be like outside the jump kind of almost this is what red has given me a lot of advice on this too of at least for my backside is coming like you're almost not gonna hit the jump looks like and you're on your heels and then you kind of come in on your heels and then last second like toes which will keep it straight yeah that's what sage would always say he's like you want your board as you're finishing that turn to start spinning you want your board dead straight off the Mm -hmm. lip yeah and that's Makes it, yeah, exactly what you it's said. It's insane when you look at, if you look at all the ruts on like a park jump. Oh my God. It's, it's like, like bad, yeah. fundy city. Yeah. Well, yeah. And it's also a lot of, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> also the skiers. Like I wonder if the skiers have that yeah, same And also process. skiers do it, like they do, I think it's for fun, but they do like the crazy carve yeah. 360s where they're like, and that's like at Woody's, you see it all the time where Trenching. it's like this huge rut. So you want to like go dead up the middle. Yeah. And I feel like that, what you're saying helps with pow jumps too, a lot. Like, Figuring lot, out how to go straight off the lip. A lot of it also matters on the grab. Like switch back nine for me. If I grab a uh, switch tail or like regular nose, you know, yeah, that'll keep me pretty flat. Um, but then if I go switch mute, you know, like regular indie, I like can it'll like turn into like a double corp. Yeah, yeah. That that last that last, last one we want to do a crippler, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. which yeah. it looks sick. Yeah. And it's and then you go straight to your toes, which is kind of nice. Yeah. Dude, if you sure. look at Zoe's switchback 12, she does like a switchback nine and then dumps it. Yeah. And so then that's no. just straight it's to the toes. You're just walking shit. in. Yeah. I've always been a fan, though, of like some sort of cork. Mm-hmm. Just makes everything more interesting, you know, when you're watching it. Mm-hmm. I think it looks so dope. Do you ever think about weight? Like some, I have this tendency, I, like sometimes spin in front side when I'm trying to spin flat. I like have too much weight on my heel back, like I'm weight, weighted back over my tail and on my heels, and it causes me to flip. Like mm. standing up straight between your bindings. Do you ever think about being centered over your board like that? 
to not yeah flip? yeah for sure i think a lot of it too i'll think about like whatever hip is going to be driving off you know like just being real stacked on that and kind of just like mm-hmm. pushing that like not you don't want to flip from kind of like looping yeah you want to like pop into a flip yep get your snap and then grab it and yoink it but i think a big thing is like there's like so much info right now you know but if you're like actually like a listener and trying to do something like think of one piece of this advice and just literally focus on that because i'll do like if you're trying to be like okay wait to pop okay my what's my line doing like it's just too much just like be like i'm gonna try to go straight like i'm not i'm gonna this time i'm make sure i'm not gonna shit hook you know that's like what I'll think about, or like I'll just be like, "Be patient," is because you, you sometimes it just takes one thing to know, like be patient on the lip, and everything else will adjust for you. Yeah, yeah. What I've, uh, I wanted to ask: What's the inspo on the front double ten hands behind the back? Oh, what have you was, seen this clip? No grab deal. Yeah, he just goes like, or you do like front ten with your hands behind your back, like just sleeping through the air, and it's so sick looking. Yeah, I don't know. We were just doing. I think what it, I don't even know how it came about. We were just doing front sevens like that. And then you kind of just go up from there, I guess. I don't know. I think a lot of it too was grabbing nose and occasionally you just miss nose and then you just do one without grabbing. <laughs> and, then you just, and then you just end just up. Floating through and the then air I'm like, oh, that would be sweet to just do that. And then I don't know. I think that's kind of just how it came so, about. Do you think you could set the world record for the world's smallest front 10 double? <laughs> I don't know. Because Red think, claims you can ja- front end double anything. I think Japan would have something to say about it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> I would, I would try, but coming. I think they'd have me. Jake Cantor wants to know, how much spinning is too much spinning, quote-unquote, asking for a friend? I feel like we're there. I don't know. <laughs> uh, 18, I guess. People are doing them so chill, though. Um... I think things past 14 don't look great. I think there's some respect there on doing it, I think, but past that, it's kind of... I think the best-looking tricks are 12s, just in general, overall. I think 12 you can do so much with, and, like, even 10, but 12 you can do so much and make it look super cool, like, fully different axes between a bunch of different people. You know, like you'll get cool axes on nines too, but I almost feel like twelve is like the the best for like variety and diversity among riders on how they're done. Um, I think twelve is the sickest mm. spin. All right, Jamie, I got a question in terms of street tech knowledge. All right, I feel like we've seen a uptick in like in like kind of more like less is more, do shit good, keep it clean keep kind of almost falling some of the skate stuff we're seeing or whatever too. Uh, you've always been a tech lord on the, on the rails. You think we're heading back into tech? Are you going to keep it tech? What's your, uh, what's your mantra? I mean, I think the gnarly shit is the best, like sick, but the tech, you don't want to just see board slides in fifties. You want to see something different and new. And with the tech stuff, you can just get away with different kinds of spots. And I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, they never go to style. Yeah, they never go out of style. I think it's more fun to think in a tech way instead of like, okay. I mean, it's almost like, well, for me at least, when I get into the habit of doing a bunch of board slides and 50 on gnarly spots, it's like, okay, this trick is like, I have a 50 and a board slide down. You don't always want to try something new at a spot. So sometimes it's scary, but you can also hit more chill spots if you do tech tricks. Mm -hmm. You just want to be well-rounded. I'm trying to get more back into the tech because I... Especially after the knee surgery, I'm not trying to hit huge spots, so I can get a little more tech on something smaller. Yeah, you had that a clip that I always loved that you did was that uh, like under the rail nose slide oh, pop yeah. up to switch front board. Yep. Like that's yeah. such an underrated thing that no one really has ever done. Like, is that the stuff that you want to try to get into more? Yeah, yeah. Like that stuff. That one just came just because the spot. Because well, we were there. Jesse Paul was jumping out of the tunnel. And then I was here, and I thought it would work. And actually, I'd Chip is, far as I know, the originator of that no slide switch front board at uh-huh. Rail Gardens. So that was not completely my idea. Sick. Mm. I always think about the rail in Massachusetts that you cab to. That was the King Crail, and I think it was a VG video. Yeah, it was rendered useless. Oh, he rendered did the useless. front board. On yeah, the, that one. Yeah, the swallowtail. Yeah, yeah. 
Like that shit, dude, it's, yeah. I think about Turks like that. Like sometimes there's like fades, fads, sorry, not fades, fads. And like tech hard, like just hard shit that's technical. Just, it just doesn't go to style. Like you could put that clip out today. People's jaw would be on the floor. You oh know? yeah. Yeah. Is that a battle? Uh, it wasn't too bad. It's did low. one to fakie. Then I didn't think I'd be able to bring it back to regular, but yeah. I got lucky. It is a it is kind of a baby spot to be honest. Yeah, it's low. <laughs> it's low as fuck. Yeah, it and, looks insane though. But it yeah. films so good, fish yeah. eye, Even though it's because it's a little bit of a buck and bronco though when you because yep. it's like long down into quick flats. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I just found a really good question, but I couldn't find it. I think it was uh, Monday Mass. What does your stance say about you? Yeah. What does the width of your stance say about you? This is from Monday Mass. Shout out to to uh, Todd and Chris. Those guys are awesome. Bond's got uh, well, I was just thinking, Yo has like an insanely small stance. Did you guys see that? Oh yeah, it's part? so crazy. Small. It almost looks like you'd have to like in- like have a special board. It was insane. It looks sick though for what he's doing. Um, what was it? What does it say about you? I don't know. Wide. Maybe I think. Comp? I think wide body's kind of like alpha. <laughs> alpha dog. <laughs> wide body stance is just like when I see like yeah, it's alpha vibes. When I see like mega wide, it's like you're definitely like tourists from Texas. You know, <laughs> you're just like blowing the Burton track all yeah. the way out and just loose. The track. The I remember one time riding at Park City, and I started that. It was when I was riding the track, the Burton track. End of the day, I didn't even realize that I looked a clip at. Uh, looked at a clip of myself and my stance was like 25 inches. <laughs> I was like, God damn. So, oh, yeehaw. So that might like be the, the situation with those. It slowly slides out and they yeah. don't realize. Mm-hmm. Ah. The wide is like when you're walking out of the gym and you're all yeah. pumped up like this and yeah. you're all setting up your snowman. <laughs> yeah. And you go and you ride like that. You want to kind of be intimidating. When you, with a wide stance mm-hmm. is intimidating. And you think about like Tech 9 back in the day, like all the G's, you know, and we're talking like 90s, you know, like it, it was gangster to have a wide ass stance you know if you were if you were running it was kind of like g's ran fat stance if you're e-code you know you listen to morrissey and shit like that you're yeah. running a narrow stance og matty ryan days. OG, yeah. yeah all the the tech nine dudes used to t-bolt their boards oh, to yeah. have a wider stance oh, yeah i used to do that too. Yeah, yeah, insane all yeah. yeah they take them into milo and just get mm-hmm. like two inches outside the inserts mm-hmm. you get a brand new 500 dollars snowboard you dr- just take a drill <laughs> yeah. and just fucking drill right through the fucking base of the thing <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I'm at 25. Bro. Oh yeah, and those dudes would run just hey, two man. screws. Yep. So they could get yep. their bindings as far out as they possibly could. Oh, yeah. Crazy. Yep. Um, okay, a couple more things here. Uh, and then we're gonna take a call. But um uh Brick Mass wants to know Jibbing's not dead Instagram. Do you have any takes? Sickest. I, don't I think it's fun. It brings I think it's lighthearted. Obviously, you can get pissed about it, but he's it's nice when someone's talking shit. Someone's always got to be talking shit. Yeah, I, I think it's dope. He goes after like everyone. Yeah, you know, like it's not like he's just trying to hit one part of snow. He's like going after everyone, which makes it tight. Mm-hmm. That's why South Park. <laughs> but like, I do yeah. wonder if some of them are just click grabs. Like, do very controversial. I'm gonna get the most comments on this yeah. one. Dude, Kulas has a hot take on this. Yeah, like, Kulas okay. is not down. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he. That dude's the Instagram was just dying. Like hadn't had any views at all. And he put up some clip of Kulas. Like, what was it? Making fun of like the Yeah, so the he lip. did it's like one of the opening cl- clips in the dust box. Down down, yeah, elbow, down, flat down. Yeah, that was nice. And the snow the stairs are covered. Yeah. And then that's the clip that got like half a million views or something and, and blew up the account. And so now he's like, I made that account. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he's just so bitter, dude. It's so funny. I mean but, this guy's incognito, huh? Yeah, yeah, incognito. No one knows. I think yeah. people have done some research. Yeah, I tried. I, I did a little research. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, we got. We got. Oh, we got a, somebody on the scent. We got somebody I, on the scent. I figured out the last two digits of the phone number. <laughs> <laughs> so. I did hear Cooper got the phone or the area code or something yeah. once as well. Uh, I got. I got to link up, up a Cooper then. Maybe we. Can, I don't think uh, he figured out who it was. I think together. the tail is like. A younger kid, our guess is in Salt Lake City. Mm. Mm. Have you guys seen know. the? Yeah, I searched uh, my phone, didn't have it. I have no idea. What's the photo of from um, the homie? That's what's the show where they're on the 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 bar, the pub show? It's got Danny DeVito. Oh, it's uh, always, it's always sunny. Sunny. you know yeah. that yeah. photo of him with all the strings and the yeah, wires. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> we're not we're not getting <laughs> yeah. to the end of this. We'll never figure it out. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think that it's like like you said, 
people, we need somebody talking shit. We're talking about it. It's yeah. good. It, I think it's good to like, to have somebody that's just fucking and chirping. And even if you're the one getting talked shit up, like, it's uh, just uh, lighthearted. You 100%. don't need to take anything yeah. seriously. You and shouldn't like, care that much. He, are his, some of his takes valid? Absolutely not. Some of his takes are <laughs> fucking horrible. Yeah, you know, like, shit. yeah, talking about R- Rav and shit like that. You're like, dude, you're a fucking idiot, dude. Yeah. You know, but then like, at least, at least somebody's doing it. At least yeah. we're talking about it. I mean, there isn't the Yobi comment board anymore. Yeah. yeah. You guys ever watch those gifted hater videos? Yeah. That oh, dude? Yeah. yeah. We, it'd be good if we had someone like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think it. no matter what, as long as you're not taking yourself too seriously, it's a non-issue. Yeah. But if you're taking yourself seriously, it's going to be an issue because it hits your ego and you're like, oh, I disagree with this guy, man. Yeah, my my back lip was squared up, I swear. <laughs> it was just a fucking camera angle, man. <laughs> I think if you got bummed on it, if he was flaming you, it might be a little ego check if you get bummed. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, flamed, like, exactly. Why exactly. am I bummed on that? Yeah. It's not... It's and deal. it's like you can get caught slipping. Sometimes you do. Mm-hmm. You put out stuff that maybe it's didn't a little soggy, get out. You know, but let's not let's not validate his takes because some of his no, takes no are he's got not, some garbage. Some, takes. He's got no. some fucking garbage takes. Uh, but I think that's why the account's growing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's true. I w- so obviously we're all familiar familiar with Travis Rice and his Orca. Yep, it's like that short kind of like pillow masher. Yep, I don't know what his. Um, the camber profile? Yeah, what the profile is yeah. on it. But I was wondering for Pelo riding, um, do you kind of want, like, I guess I just want to know the specs on something like that. Like, do you want it, like, a stiff? Do you want it soft? Do you want, like, camber? And then, like, because I was kind of thinking maybe camber and then, like, early rise rocker. Yeah, yeah. I guess, so for his board, it's, I think they call it C2, whatever, mm-hmm. lib tech camber. So it's rocker between your feet. And then it goes camber under the bindings out to the contact points so when you lay the board say on a table it like uh teeter totters back and forth so the the pressure when you're on the board isn't going to the contact points so it's like really easy and swivelly to ride that's why people like it yeah but it's from under your foot to the contact point it's full camber but it's a short stiff tail so if you're like mashing pillows you're leaning on your back foot Mm -hmm. and so you can just absorb all the impact on the back foot and then if you look, the kick tail on that board is like crazy upright. Yeah. And that makes it so you don't have like extra board behind you dragging in the snow. So it's like really easy to pivot. Yeah, and that like and, jump it. like Yeah. Like if you see him riding like crazy steep lines, he just sits on the tail and you can maneuver it like crazy. And that's just the whole design of that board. But for me, I would prefer, yeah, like a more OG camber. I still like similar like setback with just a little bit of tail that's stiff, but rocker in the nose is okay. what I I like. But yeah, that's the that's why he can yeah, and he rides supposedly he rides that in a fifty three, which yeah, tiny is insane. Yeah, it's how, super it's wide, big, isn't he? Yeah, he's I mean he's like six one and I mean he's got to be over two hundred pounds. He's built like a brick shit house. Dude. Yeah, I don't know if they're making custom ones or not, but he's huge. And it blew me away that he's riding the 53. That's I think crazy. It's got to be real stiff, too. Yeah. But yeah, it's mad wide and like the whole idea of like volume shift snowboards. It's like you can, you know, you downsize the length but increase the width of the board. So it's like the same amount of surface area on the snow sort yeah. of vibe. And gotcha. I think that's why those sty- styles of boards work so well. Yeah, well for, li- for powder, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, for powder. Yeah. I don't think for park it has the same trends. No, no, not at all. Yeah. Like with like park boards, like if you're like slope style boards, you want the most amount of effective edge. So from contact point to contact point that's touching the snow for the size of board. So if you have a steep nose and tail, yeah, steep nose and tail. So then, so like, so you ride a 52. So Mm -hmm. that board really has an effective edge of a 54, but it's in a shorter size. You're getting the full 54 worth of board under your feet, but it's only in a 52. So you can spin faster. Yeah, okay. But so that doesn't translate into PAL because that board would just sink like a rock. Mm. So it's just different for different styles of riding. That one's big on me too. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Are yeah. you at, you're at a 49 and a 52? Or just, just a, a 52. 52 now? And then in PAL, I've been running uh, 54 antidote. Yeah, clean. Which has been sick. All right, we got another product. We can run up a couple of ones for J-Stone here. Uh, Jace, this is from a Patreon member. Shout out to our Patreon members. We appreciate you guys. You guys kick ass. Um, LL Cool J wants to know, J Stone, what is the prime time lifespan you can expect from your your core materials? 
I've been riding the same stick since 2003, and I know it's well past its peak, but how often should I realistically expect to refresh the quiver? Uh, that comes down to a lot of personal preference. And like, you know, if you, like with any product, you know, if you buy a stiff board or stiff boots, the flex is going to last longer. It's not like, it's not going to get as soft as quickly as say like a park board does. Like, like a jib board, it's going to be completely clapped out after 50 days of riding. Um, I mean, I think if you're, you know, like whatever, if you're getting like 10, 15 days a season, I'd definitely say every five years you should get a new board because technology kind of rolls in like, I would say like three to five year increments. So you're just, you're just doing yourself no favors by riding a board from 2003. It's like going to be heavier. It's going to be super sift originally. The materials aren't as good. So yeah, I'd say, but I mean, if it's fun, run it up. And if you don't have money and it still works, then all good. Okay, another one for Jay Stone from our Patreon member, Sir Steezy. Question for Jay Stone. I want you to describe the perfect quiver from splitting to spring park riding. How many decks and what are the characteristics? I need you to go full tech nerd on this. Oh, God. Right up your alley. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Split board. I'm probably going to go with something super directional tapered. I do like those volume shift style boards. So something you can downsize in that's super wide just for floating and pow. And then I think it's then as far as like the rest of the quiver, I try to keep it to like three boards. So like a full on park board. Uh, I read the medium in the park, which is like full camber, but a more mellow flex. Um, pretty much can do it all. Jib, hit jumps, really fun. And then just kind of like a good directional twin all mountain board. So I read the antidote for that. And that's nice because it's got some pretty rad tech in it, like 3D in the tip and the tail. Sean, yeah, you read that board a bunch. And, that's uh, probably my favorite one yeah, it's, that I've written. It's so sick. Um, and I think that's nice because it's like having a board like that versatile, no matter the conditions, you're like, all right, well, I'm not sure if it's going to be sick pal or we're going to hit side hits or whatever. And you just have like that go-to. Like you read the Mercury a bunch, which yep. is like that's a go-to board. You're like, I don't know what the conditions are here's my board or like the team. I'm sure you read that a bit. Um, so I think having that kind of like everyday directional twin, no taper is a must in a quiver. And then I like having a true free red board. So something that's a little more tapered, a little setback, definitely on the stiffer side. So if you're, you know, like going to hit some bigger cliffs or you're just trying to like hog up through some choppy snow, I think that's kind of the, the perfect breakdown. So I read the alchemist for, as my like big mountain board. Dude, the antidote's sick though. Like I was running that in the park and then I was just eating through like the chop on like just spring side hit laps, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. Kind of like try to bomb down some shit and then side hit and then go to the park. Like that board was like really fun. Yeah. Yeah. We designed that one for that Jackson stop at natural selection. So it's just like a ton of freestyle stuff and then a mix of like tight trees, pow, kind of doing a little bit of everything like playful, but you can hog like up sage on stuff. Yeah, that's one sage rides. Yeah. Uh, M. Josie wants to know for J Stone, what is the best advancement in snowboard technology in the last 20 years? Ooh. Hard hitting question. Yeah, that's a hard one. You know, I'm not going to say it's a materials thing, but I think how we can profile cores nowadays. Cause if you look at a lot of old boards, they're like capped snowboards, super thick cores. And that's where you, if you watch an old, I don't know, like old TV movies, people are just getting absolutely bodied doing a board slide on a handrail because their board is just so unforgiving and stiff or like, I don't know, trying to like back five, a backcountry jump and just like barely fuck up on the lip and just get so smoked. So now we have these things called AEMs, which is, it's a CNC belt sander. So you have like a CNC motor, you feed your core through this massive belt sander and you can do any profile you want. So that's how you get like the extra torsional flex. 
you can make it stiff or soft wherever you want it. So if you look down the edge of your board, you can see it like changes thickness a ton. So now that we've gotten so much better at actually manufacturing the cores and being able to change the core profiles, that's why all these boards ride so much different or so much easier. So I think that's probably the biggest advancement. And then just sidewalls over cap is yep. 100%. You see the ride new ride has those like uh cat boards yes, that just came slim out. Slim walls. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And those are so fun. Like they have like on the war pig and mountain pig like Dan rides those boards a bunch of animals and they're so fun for carving. Like mm -hmm. they hold a crazy good edge. But yeah, it's just it's just different and that's cool cuz they're cutting down on like uh, you know, scrap material during manufacturing. So you're getting less waste during mm -hmm. manufacturing, so you're making a better snowboard for the environment. So I think that's the reason that they went that route, but yeah, it's good to switch things up, but yeah, I love sidewalls and have we, do we ever talk about waxing the sidewall? No, we never did. Cause somebody, Waxed. I think it was De <laughs> Des brought it up after the call last time. Yeah. 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 What do you guys have a take? Have you guys ever waxed your sidewalls? I've, I've heard people it. do that. Never in bank slums. You, have you ever I mean, it? I've never, no, uh, I don't do bank slums either though. So yeah. So I, I want to say the first time I ever heard it was like Terrier did it for like LDS or something, but uh, I've been over to Japan a few times and hang out with the Japanese homies over there who are like, there's this whole crew called like down chill and they just like, dude, they're doing carves where their armpit is touching mm -hmm. the snow. They're insane at carving and they are like die hard about waxing their sidewalls. Does it's, Nils wax his sidewalls? Probably. He's got it. We, yeah, we got to That, we that gotta would really be telling. Yeah, we got to find that out. But I mean, yeah, like our sidewalls are made of uh, sintered base material, so you can wax them full on. Uh, but yeah, if you're trying to win a bank slalom, it doesn't hurt. It makes sense when you're yeah. carving your sidewalls, digging into the snow. Spending some time on the sidewall. Yeah. yeah. I mean, tech, the slowest thing on your board is your edge. So really, if you wanted to make like a full on race board, you'd have like paper thin edges and then that's the like razor sharp and paper thin. And that's going to be the fastest board you could design. Mm. Interesting. Okay. Uh, this is another one for product talk and then we're going to take a call here. Uh, D H Finner five, five, five D H Pinner D H Pinner five, five, five Galen Galen, the homie sick. He wants to know, can J stone give a breakdown on flex and maybe highlight how it affects the turning radius in powder. That's a great, that's a great topic. Oh yeah. Yeah. This is something, uh, I don't think a lot of people think about, like we've been talking a ton about torsional flex and like how you can use that to manipulate the board and like manipulate the ride. And, uh, if you think about like, you know, so when you you have your board just on a, a chill groomer and you're not going super fast and you just put it up on edge. So whatever the side cut is, that's just designed into the perimeter of your board that's the side cut that it's going to turn on but if you start pushing your weight into the board and start flexing the board with your body weight all of a sudden you're bending the board more and so you can create a tighter turn and that's something that so if you understand that concept you can like shift back onto your tail push hard onto the tail and you're going to flex the tail of the board more create a tighter turn so you can make the board be more dynamic and so yeah, like having, having something that you can manipulate the flex with your body weight goes a long way. That's like dudes who ride those crazy carving like GS boards, they're actually not that stiff. So they can push their whole body weight through it to create a crazy tight turn. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah, for people out there riding, like start like go into a heel side turn and lean onto your front foot and try and push through your side cut and then lean back to the tail when you're exiting the side cut and you'll start flinging out of this turn and it gets way more fun. So you can, you can do a lot just by changing how the board rides, but that's where flex patterns of boards and the side cut, it's so intertwined with the design. Like you, if you make a board super stiff between the bindings, you can't create that tighter turn. It's going to be that, it's going to be whatever the perimeter shape of the board is. It's going to take that turn. But if you can start manipulating it with your body weight and your feet, then you can start doing some really cool stuff with it or like spinning off jumps what you're like when you're doing that like twist as you're going up the lip you're keeping your side cut straighter yeah, without yeah. even thinking about it yeah keeping it longer yeah the longer side cut so you go straight damn dude yeah it's blowing my it's mind pretty nuts i had a question yeah just let's just say hypnotist yep if you set it back mm -hmm. 
what have you done now with your contact points and things like that? If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. It's not enough weight over the nose for. Yeah, so it, it starts. Turn. Yeah, yeah. I think you know, when you're really starting to like dive into like say a heel side turn, once you, and it's all how the board's set up. Like boards are set up with a side cut setback with insert setback for a reason. So you're always sacrificing something. Like I encourage people to set their bindings back. Or even if you're riding a super directional board, you can set them a little bit forward. Just know the board's now going to carve differently, but it might unlock like the ability to ride switch better in powder, even though it's directional. Mm -hmm. But you're going to lose a little bit of that like grip into your heel side turn, your toe side turn, because you're now away from that contact point. Yeah. Um, but then you're going to get a lot more grip out of the back contact point because you're shifted closer oh, to yeah. that. So it's gotcha. kind of, and when it's, I mean, it's really when you get into like extremes, when you sit it like way back, if you're only mm -hmm. doing like a disc hole, which is 10 millimeters, then it's not like a huge, huge difference. But like if you're shifting at 20 millimeters or 30, it gets, yeah, it, you can change the board a ton by doing that. Because it's mad fun just to be like, look down and be like, your nose is bigger. Or like when you go and switch on a directional, it's like the funnest thing. Yeah, yeah. It feels like you're like skating. Yeah, I pretty much, surfing. I, I set every twin board back. And like yeah. I what never, uh, I do three quarters of an inch, yeah. which is, yeah, like uh, just pretty, or 20 millimeters, which is the, the insert, or the space between two inserts is 20 millimeters. So yeah, yeah, I, I like that look for sure. The skateboard. It feels sick. Yeah. I always think about, uh, you know, cornering, whether you're, whether you're racing mountain bikes or BMX or moto, uh, you know, like I think about it in the same way that like they always tell you, you know, get your weight up over your front tire as you get into the corner. So you want to get all of your weight over the front tire because that's what's driving your turn. Yep. And so like if you if your weight's way back going into a corner, your front tire just might push. Like you might just there's no there's no traction to dive you into the corner. And it, I I recently just had the epiphany like as J Stone not not today but you know last year about oh like when I'm carving it's the same thing. Like you want the f beginning of your corner or your turn to start with your weight over the front. So the beginning of your effective edge dives into the corner. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and if you look at, like, if you watch any clips of Nils car carving, when he's, especially on heel side, he's like so dumped over the nose. Yep. Like he's crazy far forward. And it's that balance. Cause if like you were saying, if you stay too far on the nose through the turn, then you're going over the bars. Yep. But it's that perfect balance where you're like, you dive into the front of the board and then you just shift your weight towards the back yep. and you can really like fling yourself through the turn. Same with, yeah, like BMX or, or uh, mountain biking or yeah. moto. Yeah. Kind of just like compressing. Like I think about that, like biking, you just like compressing yeah. through it. And then it's still same with like uh, snowboarding yeah, yeah. and skating even. Just like, oh yeah, for sure. Galen's going to love this. He's like OG beast downhill mountain biker. He's going to be oh, all over this. Yeah. 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 Also amazing. beast snow yeah. snowbird ripper. For sure. He's the man. One more question here, uh, and this one's for Bond. Ty Walks wants to know, how tough was the process for your dub off that big rock at Mount Hood? The one that, if you're not familiar, he did a front 10 off of the rock in summer, right? Yeah. The process of it? Well, we just kind of went up there, and we were doing, like, the solstice thing, and then kind of slowly just we were sessioning it, and then I tried a front 7, over-rotated, and I was like, oh, I could probably do front 10 and then ended up trying it and tried it a bunch of times was landing and kind of just getting blown up thought it was too flat to land so then called it and then went went home chilled and I was like fuck I feel like I could probably get that and then called up my two buddies and like we'll come help you dig and film and I was like okay word so then went back up there and landing was like horrible and like kind of threw some snow into there redid the lip and then i think i, I think it was like third try or fourth try or something just it was getting super bombed out and i was like i don't think well i kind of felt like you know when like your homies come up and mission with you and you're like damn i'm about to let them down big time <laughs> like after the first few hits i'm like this is not possible and then it just like i don't know just worked one time it looks so flat dude. it was so yeah. flat dude. you bounced straight up like it it's like so the Tropic Thunder scene. Survive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was flat as, dude. And the day before you had a crowd, day after you are just, you Yeah, know, just passion project. No energy passion. in the gym, second yeah, day. No energy in the gym. 
But it was kind of just one of those. I mean, I'm sure you guys are used to it just when you leave something. Like, you just got that. You came back from last year and got yeah, the yeah. clip. You know, like, just like that feeling of feel like you're like, I could probably do that. Yeah. Like, and it bugs you. So then you just, then you get it. How was the clip high the other day, JMO? It was good. Felt felt good to get a clip. It wasn't anything crazy, but first clip of the year, you know, got something on the timeline. JMO, you're good every year for the past 20 years for at least, at the very least, a handful of savage A grades. Like yeah. J- JMO Last provides. year was definitely the worst because I blew out my knee two years ago, and then I had to work all summer, so I couldn't get surgery so I waited like a whole year to get surgery. So everything I got last year was no ACL. Damn. Yeah. Gnarly. Who, who filmed the clip this year? Uh, I was with Matt Coughlin. Sick. Yep. Two. And then going out tomorrow with Mo and Kulos Woo. and Mikey. Oh, yeah. Woo. Mikey LeBlanc. You got spots? Uh, I got some spots. Kulos is up tomorrow. He's got a spot. Are you a, are you a spot like and a trick guy? Or are you like, I got this spot. I'll see what happens. Uh, I... I kind of need to have an idea of what I'm going to do. I'm not too good at, like, scoping, hitting it on the spot. I like to, like, find something and then think about it. You got a good list going? You got some stuff in the back uh, pocket? I got stuff, but I'm also down to recycle old spots. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, hey, you once, got the once Provo, you're comfy out there. You got all the Provo plug yeah, yeah, spots. Yeah, exactly. No, so there's still County. spots around here. It's a little bit more work and a little bit more of a hassle, but. Are you spending a lot of time on Google Maps? Uh, if we're going on a trip around here, I do. I mean, I've lived here my whole life. I know quite a bit around here. So if I see like new stuff being built somewhere, I'll go scope it. But now do you got a vault like in your phone, like folder? Oh yeah. Salt Lake spots. Oh yeah. Pins. I got stuff. I, yeah. Ted Borland's probably top of the list with like the longest list, but I'd say like if someone new came into town and needed to look at a folder, I got a pretty deep folder. That's sick. (laughs) Homie's hundred bucks a spot. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, that's always the worst. It snows. You're like, fuck. Where should we go? Damn it. <laughs> Wish we had some spots. But JMO's got you yeah. covered. No one's ever prepared in Salt Lake, which is funny. Everyone lives here, spends all their time here, doesn't have anything once mm-hmm. it snows. The art of finding the spot, too. All right, I'm going to give uh, Jim Sanko, who's VP of Innovation for Blackstrap, a call right now. He's kind of come online. He uh, these, he just came down for our event, the Dust Bomb. Blackstrap supported that. Let's see if he picks up. That's a weird ringtone. <laughs> see, what is he, in Europe? Uh, Jim, you there? I'm here. Happy to have you on air. Did you have a good time uh, hanging at the Dust Bomb? Yeah, man. Um, can't say enough about... Uh, the vibe that you guys put out in Utah up there, um, you know, got the chance to come down, hang with you, hang with Jules, all the red sponsors, all the red people that put on the event and participated and uh, second to none, man. It was, it was great. We had a good time. Nice. I love that. Well, let's talk about what's going on with, uh, with Blackstrap because it seems like you guys are making a big push and uh, you guys been in the game for a long time, but uh, yeah, just love to hear what you guys got going on. Yeah, no doubt. Um, so just top level for Blackstrap. Um, you know, we've been at been a company we were founded in 2008 and we've been at retail since 2010. And um, the things we're most known for are uh, face masks, face gear, balaclavas, neck tubes, all that fun stuff. <clears throat> um, and uh, over the last few years, uh, obviously, we've still really been pushing in the accessories category, but uh, base layer has become a really big focus for us. And uh building out our base layer line and taking tons of feedback from retailers and tons of feedback from, from our ambassadors and park programs that we sponsor and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, we've kind of turned into this just one stop shop for, uh, kind of everything you would wear on your, on your skin when you're, when you're out, out ripping, having a good time. So. Nice. And I, I gotta say, Jim, I'm actually currently wearing the black strap, uh, underlayers, in booth, I walked my dog this morning before I came here. A little, a little bit brisk in Salt Lake, but um, no, no bullshit. Tested them out because you know we like to. Before we do a deal with anybody, we always say send us the product. You know if we like it and we're down for it, we'll talk about it. And and I went hiked up to the spot in the black strap under layers. You know I've been riding in them all season and fuck man, they're good. They're, you guys make good stuff. So um, and I think it's important. You know a lot of times you take your friend snowboarding that doesn't snowboard that much. And they're cold and they have a miserable experience. And I think sometimes the importance of layering and good underlayers 
as as like obvious as that sounds, is overlooked in snowboarding. Yeah, and I think uh, you know, like for your friends that are doing it for their first time, maybe haven't been in the elements like that. Uh, you know, it's we're we're based in Bend, Oregon, and it's single digits here now, so we get the full gambit here, and that's kind of where our base layer line was kind of built, tested, and stamp of approval for us. Um, but it's also interesting too, just uh, with thermal regulation as a whole, when you're in the mountains. Uh, you know, you can be too cold and have a crappy time, and you can be too hot and have a crappy time too. You get sweaty goggle fog all that stuff and um our line for base layer is um it's really tight you know for men's and women's um and kids we have uh for men's and women's we have three different setups that are really just kind of temperature dependent um you know our skyliner and pinnacle series is our lighter weight it's great if you're um if you're doing switchbacks on your split board um or if you're in a more mild climate uh, our summit and cloud chaser lines are the things um i wear that kit pretty much opening day to closing day. And then I actually, I'll switch out my face mask too a lot. You know, we make a bunch of different um, weights and designs and face masks that, um, you know, most of the heat that you lose when you're on hill is through your head. Um, So a lot of times you can do a lot of work to keep yourself comfortable, whether you need to be warmer or cooler when uh, you can switch out your face mask and find a base layer kit that that you really like. Um, And then we also have our Thermaline for men's and women's and kids. um, And that's our like, just arctic cold-blooded killer um super comfy super soft it's got a really nice brushed inner um and i guarantee it'll keep you warm um from me all the way down to you know i've got two little daughters a little six-year-old and she lives in that stuff even when she's not on the hill um so yeah we we try and keep it simple but we also try and have it make sense you know we we don't try to put products out there that are uh that are filler we definitely want the best stuff out there hell yeah well that's awesome um, well, it seems like you guys are doing a, a big push in snowboarding too, like doing big things, uh, making a run for it and, and coming at, coming at it from all angles. It's cool. So, yeah. And I think, uh, you know, that's kind of a reflection on us as a company. Um, you said my, my title is, yeah, my current title is VP innovation, but I've been fortunate enough to hold the title of first employee at Blackstrap. I've been here for 13 years and we've gone through a lot of, ups, downs, left, rights, and changes. And, uh, the last two years has just been, um, I mean, the ship is really, is really sailing. And now we're getting to really focus on like the things we really love, which a lot of us here, we snowboard, um, that's kind of at the core of everything that we do. And, um, yeah, it's been rad to be able to focus on it a lot. And, um, our marketing team has been lights out. Our creative team has been lights out. And, um, it's been really exciting to watch all the back end work that we do translate seasonally into, into growth and into demand for our products and into demand for new products. Um, and yeah, we really look forward to just continuing the charge, no doubt. Right on. Well, that's awesome. Uh, and you guys are coming back down and being a part of bomb hole cup, I believe, right? Yeah, totally. We're already, I'm already looking forward to it. And, uh, now with all this wild snow that everyone's got, it's cert for sure going to be set up and ready to go. Might need to, uh, See if I can find my way onto that bank slalom course. Oh yeah, let's get you out there bashing some <laughs> gates. That's what we need. It's a bad day to be a turn when Jim's out on the course. Yeah, bad day to be a turn. <laughs> yeah, Jim. Yeah, well, I survived. I survived Derby this year, so hopefully, hopefully we can maintain through April. So. Oh yeah, keep her healthy. Get ready for bomb World Cup. You get on a good training regimen. You eat right. You hit the gym every day. You know, you stay focused. You do some uh, mindset coaching. Maybe you see a sports psychologist. You know, let's get you on top of the box. Whatever it takes. Roids will help. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and then too, you know, we we keep it real. I can't lie to you guys. I'm just sitting here with a with a nice cold pub beer, just hanging out at the there office, it is. prepping this week up. So you know, we got an industry fun. class too, Jim. We got an industry class at Bomb Hole Cup. So, uh, oh, there's okay. there's some sandbaggers in there though. I think Stu, you raced that one. Uh, what did you race last year? Know. Oh, I didn't race last year. I was hurt. Okay. Yeah. A couple of knee surgeries. There's some, <laughs> let me tell you something, Jim. We got sandbaggers. You got to watch out for these Alex guys. Andrews. Alex Andrews. Alex Andrews won. Yeah. He, yeah. He's a big time <laughs> sandbagger. Yeah. Um, well, you don't have to, I'm not a, I'm not a standout. I'm just a hooter and a hauler. A good time. And I like to be a nerd about my wax. So it's all good. There it is. One last question for you, Jim. Do you wax your sidewalls at Bank Slalom's? Uh, no, but I, I was brought up to speed that apparently the top sheet wax is a, is a clutch. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yep, that's true. That is true. Top Insight. sheet. You're gonna want to yeah, watch you, the top sheet. That's a pro. Yeah, tip. some real some real insights. Yeah, I was, I was thinking. Yeah, you know, rip off my crab grabs. There's some throw some uh, surf wax on the top and mm-hmm. be good to go. Foot won't be sliding around. Be good. Oh yeah, good to go. All right, Jim. Thanks yeah. for checking in. Good, and uh, we'll see you April sixth and seventh for Bombhole Cup. Yeah, no worries. Thank you guys. And I know I said it before, but uh, really appreciate uh, all the hospitality when we were out there. And uh, yeah, like I said, that event was, uh, don't know the last time I got to set up a tent and watch a bunch of people throw down on a just good old classic rail jam and then just see the, the who's who snowboarding out there. It was great. Cool. Love that. Well, thanks for being a part of it, Jim. It was a good time. Yeah. Thank you guys. Have a good one. And uh, yeah, it's snowing like crazy everywhere. So. All right. Cool. We'll talk to you soon. Later, cool. Jim. Yeah, cheers, guys. Bye. Wow, oh, what a good chat. And Jim. Rail jams. Okay, Jim. Yeah, Jim. Rail jams are fucking awesome. I'm going to say it. Oh, yeah. I love a good rail jam. Call me old-fashioned. I haven't changed. I'm 36 years old. Still love it a comes good rail out. jam. The age comes oh, out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I saw J-Mo getting in there. What do you guys think about rail, what do you think about rail jams, Bon? I like watching them. Mm. I'm not really going to step through. Love watching them. You know, the slope style guys are a little bit too elite for rail jam. Also, that is not true. Yeah, that is not elite. true. He's too elite. No. He's just like, I just don't want to stunt on everybody, so I'm just going to watch from the side. Watching the pro division. not true. Watching the pro division is one thing, but like the open class honestly goes way harder. Pro division's a little too calculated. Yep. But the open class yep. is where things get mm-hmm. reckless. spicy. Yeah. You're hoping for a back rodeo <laughs> onto a rail or something, <laughs> and you're gonna probably see one. Homies are willing to risk it all for like a jacket, dude. <laughs> That's so a sick. risk it for the biscuit. That's a risk. Two it for pairs the of sand scenario. socks. I'll ping on this rail. All day <laughs> I will fucking die for those socks. <laughs> oh, there's a there's a best bail, <laughs> free pair of pants. <laughs> Don't mind if I go head first right now. Dude, I'm getting co- upside down. <laughs> every Without contest a needs a best bail because when you get best bail, you're like. I got you're body. pretty bummed, but, yeah. but then you win. You get a trophy, you're like, I fucking, I did something. And people are hyped. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah. like you were saying, the AM, like the open class is always the sickest. Oh, yeah. Because people are just oh, yeah. going for Yeah, it. it's mm-hmm. Kark Chuck season out there. So, oh, yeah. Kark Chuck season. All right, I think we've been bantering long enough. Um, let's fucking put a bow on this thing. What do you guys think, huh? Yeah. Sounds good. Any they other topics? Anything. I think we got we had enough product talk. You know, we got to keep Stone them wanting was more product talk. He yeah. he took care of it. Stoon, the, the people are like addicted to Stoon's product talk. You, you got can't give them too much. You got to keep them coming back for more. <laughs> <laughs> can't do it all at once. Yeah, can't do it all you are definitely selling around. probably more snowboarders than a lot of the riders. Oh yeah, that's fact. You were selling yeah. me on things. <laughs> <laughs> You're like fuck, man. I might just go go to Milo and buy this thing right now. I get it for free, but <laughs> hey, Mark, don't send the box. Yeah, I'm going MSRP. Yo, Tommy J from K2, you got a fat invoice coming at you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this has been a good group I'm chat. T bolts in there. <laughs> we'll talk to you guys soon. Uh, thank you so much to all of our sponsors that came on board, all of our Patreon members, everybody that listens, uh, everybody that tunes in. We appreciate you guys. And thanks for coming and talking. Yeah. Vaughn, thank you. J Mo. That was fun. Yep. J Stone. Yeah, no problem. Good times. Yeah, it's Friday. For coming, guys. It's coming out Wednesday, but today's Friday. So it's the freaking Wiccan. We're about to have some fun. Got a know? lot of pow Ooh. coming our way. Oh, yeah. That'll be yeah. good. We're getting the turby out in the pasture. Okay. Uh, thanks for tuning in, Silk. Appreciate you. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Silk. Yeah, Silk. All right. Later, guys. Have a good weekend. Get some. Later. Thanks.